Testing. Testing one, two, three. <laughs> I can hear myself. I don't like that because it's making it an echo. Yeah, let's do that. Do that. Okay. Let me turn that off. There we go. Now I don't hear myself, so I can talk normally. Aha! Uh -huh. Okay, so I believe we are working here. And uh, I see everyone chatting. And yeah, I think we're good. So hello, everybody, and happy December. Happy holidays. Hope everyone's doing well. I see we got George Sanger here with us. Thank you for stopping by during the stream. It is going to be a wonderful, wonderful day today. Um, we have so much planned, and I see everybody else is here. Uh, we got CO100 Able, I see you there. I see Devin from the Discord right there. I see how you doing. How's everyone doing today? Thank you so much. Sorry about the, um, uh, the long waiting. I wasn't actually ready. <laughs> I was actually getting everything set up and ready to go and good old Ryan um, <laughs> wasn't wasn't ready like usual. <laughs> and uh, I actually ain't quite ready just yet. I need to go find my phone and also get a glass of water. But before I do that, um, let me give the rundown on what we're doing today. We are doing quite a lot, uh, again, that I wasn't ready for. <laughs> I should have been. I had a long time to plan, but I wasn't ready for it. Um, we got a lot of stuff planned for today. We're playing Putt-Putt Saves the Zoo, but it's slightly different. And uh, I'm not going to say everything that's different in the game. Um, I want you to be able to try to catch it, because it's going to look a little bit different, which is strange. Uh, it's just going to be something to play to fill the time a little bit because I play Papa Saves the Zoo a lot. We all know Papa Saves the Zoo. We all know how it ends. Uh, it's in the title, actually. And then we're going to play Freddy Fish 4, and we're going to check out Box Critters. Then we're going to play Minecraft 1.18, and then we're going to... So, what I usually do during my live streams is I have, um... Uh, <laughs> hi, Jake. Yes, I'm always unprepared. Every single time. <laughs> um, I lost my train of thought. Um, so, invitations to ScumJS. Yes, there will be for a short period of time during this live stream in the next couple of days where you will be able to beta test the ScumJS tech demo. And for this tech demo, we're going to do uh, the Freddy Fish tech demo because that's the one with the least amount of bugs. Uh, the Joins the Circus tech demo is not ready. There is a video issue when you're playing on mobile. The videos never load in. And it's only iOS that that issue is happening on. Uh, <laughs> uh, whether you're doing Chrome or Firefox, it all runs off a of back end of Safari, so there's an issue with that. But, um, so, oh, okay, so yeah, the invitations to the Freddy Fish Scum JS Tech Demo, I'll share a link to that in the chat. We'll play it together. You guys play it a little bit. Uh, let me know if you find any bugs with it, of course, because it's, uh, it's public, but also still private beta testing because it's only going to be available during the stream and a few days after. Um, so the Scum JS tech demo, of course, it's an adventure game software in JavaScript. Uh, I'll share that a little later on. And then at the end, uh, we have two more things. We have the talkie file featuring the one, the only George Sanger and Team Fat. So, uh, we were going to have two people uh, from Team Fat on with us, but um, we only had one, so I'm going to keep it a little bit of mystery when we get down to the uh, talkie file. But 
for right now, if you could just excuse me for one second while I go grab my phone and a glass of water. I'll be right back, and then we're going to get into Putt-Putt Saves the Zoo, but a little bit different, okay? Let me go grab a glass of water and my phone. I'll be right back, I promise. Okay, I am back. Thank you so much for bearing with me there. I appreciate it so much. I'm um, putting my lapel back on. Uh, this is only like my third time using my uh, good lapel, so let me know how it sounds, please. Uh, I'm usually using a cheap one that I got from Wish, or in years prior, I used um, my Blue Yeti, which was not good, was not good, was not good. <laughs> Um, ah, whistling the putt-putt tune, George. Which putt-putt tune? The go get pep or, well, I mean, go get pep. Well, that, you can hear go get pep in just about all the songs and, um, zoo, zoo, zoo and all the songs too. So, I mean, whistling the putt-putt tune, that could mean either of those, but, um, <laughs> all right, everybody. So, let me make sure uh, the putt-putt is ready to go here. And it looks like it is. And we're playing this in Scum VM uh, just because it's well optimized for uh, Windows 10. So, we're going to be playing that, the whistly one. <laughs> Baldini's theme? <laughs> oh, wait, no. Um, oh, I think Hitchhiker is the whistling one. Um, I think it's Hitchhiker. Um, hold on a second. I kind of want to see. There's a few whistling ones, but yeah, Car Town Hitchhiker. I feel like you're, I feel like you're whistling Car Town Hitchhiker. <laughs> I don't think you can hear the music, but I'm 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 whistling Car Town Hitchhiker. Let me see. How can I? How can I? Um. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Yes. I I had a feeling that was the one. <laughs> Car Town Hitchhiker. That I love Car Town Hitchhiker. <laughs> 
I knew that was the one. <laughs> All right, everybody. So I think ScumVM is ready for Putt-Putt Saves a Zoo. So what happens when I do this if I just select Scum Scene? Okay, great. Great, 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 great. And uh, right off the bat, you can already start seeing that something's a little bit different in uh, Putt-Putt Saves a Zoo. And uh, some of these things, uh, I'll talk about what is different, but then I'm going <laughs> to... We were jamming for a second then. Yes, we was. I love Car Town Hitchhiker. I love... <laughs> All right, George. <laughs> Hopefully we see you later on, okay? I'll type it out here, too. Um, I'm trying to type. Why can't I type? Okay, well, you, you heard me. <laughs> All right, yeah, we'll see you in a little bit, George. Um, so, I don't know why I couldn't type. My, I was, it, it just, just was not working. Um, anyways, uh, CO100 Able says, this version of ScumVM emulator looks decent. It's, uh, one of the newer versions. Um, I don't know if I downloaded the version that has the external music. Oh, you know what? Version 2.50 was the latest one, and I think that was the one I downloaded. So, let me actually hop onto uh, George's um, Bandcamp for a second here. Because I'm on a completely different computer. I don't have um, my files on here. But let me hop onto his Bandcamp, and let me download the ScumVM... Um, uh, ScumVM Ready Music. I, I think this version of ScumVM has it. So, in my tutorial, I was talking about the version of ScumVM for a reason. Um, they have something called, what is it, nightly builds, daily builds? Um, where they're beta versions of ScumVM. And... At the time, only, oh, I'm trying to think, at the time, the um, modification for playing uh, music files in ScumVM versus the HE4 file uh, was only available with the um, nightly builds. So we're going to see if... Uh, this version of ScumVM has it in it because I haven't checked since using the nightly build because I'm trying to fix the classic versions not loading in the external music because we have Puppa Goes to the Mew Moon. Mune. Did I just say Mune? We have Puppa Goes to the Moon uh, in high fidelity, so I know a lot of people want to play that. And, um,. I have that. I'm trying to get that fixed, so I'm I'm still using the nightly build of Scum VM. So I haven't had a chance to check if the release has it yet. So this will be a good opportunity. Let me quickly download um the uh, Putt Putt Saves the Zoo music from his band camp here. Maybe. Hello. Band camp. Bandcamp? Oh, did I lose internet connection? Is that what happened here? Can you guys still hear me? Did I lose internet connection? Oh, no. Did I? Oh. I think I might have lost internet connection. How do we fix that? I think I... Oh wait, no I didn't. I think I might have lost internet connection. See, that's why I brought my phone. 
to check if I was still streaming. <laughs> Alright, five minutes left for the Scumvium music, uh, or the music from Bandcamp. So while we're letting that download, uh, we can actually start playing here. And uh, like I was saying, um, already you notice some differences. That, um, oh wait, you can't hear this. <laughs> you can't hear this. <laughs> There's no way you're going to be able to hear this. Um, wow, hilarious. Stereo mix. There we go. All right, let's see how loud that is. Fill your tank. Get in step. <laughs> All right, now you should be able to hear it. So that logo we were just looking at, oh, I didn't get to do the Papa Travels Through Time thing here. I was going to swap out the logo for the Papa Travels Through Time logo. <laughs> um, anyways, I didn't get to do that. That was a lot of work because I had to uh, build the costume file from scratch, basically, and make sure it fit. But um, that logo we just saw was actually... Uh, an in-house logo from Humongous Entertainment that I don't think ever made it out into the public. Um, I don't know who made it. Um, I was given it to, I was given it, um, uh, while working at, uh, Nimbus. I don't remember where I put all of them. I had a few saved to bitmap for some reason, but, um, it was an in-house logo that um, I don't think ever made it out to the public. So you got to see a little bit of secret art. Um, all right, let's just click around and see everything, you know? Wow. Wow, so Baldini's Grocery Store, I love it. Definitely just an ordinary game of Putt-Putt Saves a Zoo. Nothing, nothing out of the ordinary here. Absolutely not. Nothing out of the ordinary. Trust me, it's per perfect, perfectly normal. Perfectly normal. Definitely nothing out of the ordinary here. And I'm actually going to play a little bit slower here because I want the um, music from Bandcamp to download. I got 32 seconds left. I want to put it in so that we can uh, play the puppet set up. Uh, so we can play Welcome to the Zoo with the high fidelity music. But um yeah, nothing nothing strange about this version of Puppet Saves the Zoo, right? 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 Nothing strange. Nothing strange. Nothing strange. Nothing strange at all. Definitely nothing from uh prototype versions of Puppet Saves the Zoo. Uh definitely not hidden or uh, unreleased graphics. I don't know what you're talking about. Um Nope, it's just a, it's a normal version of Putt Putt Saves a Zoo. <laughs> All right, here's the ScumVM folder. Oh, I don't know which song is. <laughs> I don't know which song is uh, Welcome to the Zoo. That's funny. Here, hold on. I want to... Let's see if I can find it. Does anyone know what the song ID is for for um Welcome to the Zoo? I feel like it's like No, that's Oh, 807? Yes. 807. That was yeah okay perfect. Let me grab this and this is this is a good chance to see if uh see if ScumVM put the um why can't I why can't I speak and do stuff put the uh well so the modification was mixed into the actual um build of ScumVM, so it should be in there. So, we're gonna find out. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah. Not, n definitely no sprites from unreleased content or prototypes of Puppet Saves the Zoo. 
or uh, localized versions of Putt Putt Saves Zoo. I don't know what you're talking about. It's okay, just a normal version of Putt Putt Saves Zoo. Zoo. Alright, let's let's see if I got it right. Oh. We are the topiary creatures. We're very pleased to meet you, Signors and Signoritas too. It's not eight oh seven? You know what? It it might not be in this version of Scum VM. I wonder why it isn't. You want since since we're playing an odd version of Putt Putt Saves a Zoo, let's uh let's do this together. See if we can figure out why that's not um why that's not in Scum VM. Shall we? We shall, right? Okay. Oh. I guess Scumvium just needed reloaded. Okay. Listen to that music. Oh, it's so beautiful. Zoo, zoo. With the kangaroos. Roos, roos. And the tigers, too. Two, two. Welcome to the I'm going to get a copyright strike for this, but it's all right. <laughs> Come run and see our clients. <laughs> Nothing is different about this other than the high quality music, but that's something you can do yourself um, uh, with the tutorial that I posted on my YouTube channel. Um, go on to George's Bandcamp, purchase the Puppet Saves the Zoo music to get your official copy of it, which you'll get the music you can play in your favorite media player or and music that you can play in scum vm with the official release now so um since the release has been updated to 2.5 uh, all you need is the official release and you can play with high quality music welcome to the zoo ruse ruse <laughs> That was great. That was worth that was worth downloading it. <laughs> that was absolutely worth it. Okay. So um Yeah. Oh. I did say strike. <laughs> I meant, uh, claim. Copyright claim. Um, yeah, that was my bad, sorry. I can't speak and do things at the same time. <laughs> Hello? Up back out? Hot diggity! Is this a can I chat inside the OBS window? I don't think I can. Well, that's annoying. I have the chat thing set up. Because I had to connect my account... Um, because for some reason the stream key just wasn't working. Don't know why. Alright, so let's go see Chuck Wagon first. Um, you know, it's so weird playing that song in the high fidelity version and then coming back to the 11.025 hertz version. It's really strange because like I've been listening to the high quality music for a while now and I'm like, I could have just sworn that's how Putt Putt Save the Zoo was with the high fidelity music. Alright, let's go see Paddy Wagon. It says hubcaps. hubcaps. Wow. It says free camera. Yes. It says Paddy's gift way. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. It does say Paddy's gift wagon. That's correct. It normally says Paddy's gift wagon, doesn't it? Right, Putt Putt? I mean, yeah. It, says Patty's it normally says Patty's gift wagon. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's weird. Well, if it isn't I, it's I, I don't talk to Patty much, so I, I can't remember if it says Patty's gift wagon or not. I'll have so many fine gift items to sell. <laughs> Gorilla salt and pepper shakers, souvenir hubcaps, even free cameras. Cool cameras, Patty. Take it, hot 
cool cameras, Patsy. All right, thanks, Patty. We'll see you later. Actually, let's take a picture of Patty. Can we do it from here? Oh, we can. Wow, Patty's wonderful. All right, let's go and get these cutscenes initiated. And we'll come get these cutscenes initiated. Kenya. Scared of that mouse. And while we're here, let's uh let's get a new paint job. That will be fun. Great alligator green. So, so we were talking earlier, everybody. I'm glad everybody's doing great. Um, how's everyone's holidays doing? Like, um, Hanukkah isn't a. I know it's gonna be so horrible me to say that. Let's see here. Hanukkah ended December six. Okay. Ah, wow. Okay, what about Kwanzaa? Well, does anyone celebrate anything that isn't uh, Christmas? Anyone? Oh, Kwanzaa goes to January 1st, but it starts December 26th. Wow. Okay, well, happy late Hanukkah and happy early Kwanzaa for people who celebrate it. Um, does anyone celebrate anything that's not Christmas here? Let me know in the chat. Let's talk about that, shall we? Um, I don't normally celebrate Christmas. I just, um, I celebrate the, uh, I celebrate all the holidays because I don't normally celebrate Christmas. Um, but I'm a fan of Christmas. I love Christmas music. Um, I love December. I love winter. Uh, this year winter wasn't as cold and snowy, but then again, winter where I lived, doesn't always end in December, so winter's gonna go on for a little bit longer. Um, I don't know how long, and I forgot how long our winter season is, but um, oh, I miss our little Samantha. it's not that cold right now here in December, and it's a bummer. Next time you paint Papa a different color, I recommend yellow since that reminds me. Brum? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Um, yeah, when we go back to, um, uh, the grasslands, uh, we'll paint them yellow. But, uh, Thanksgiving? Thanksgiving? Someone celebrating Thanksgiving in December? Is that, is that, is that possible? I mean, of course it is, but, like, is there a thanks... Thanksgiving song in December. It was the first Thanksgiving in December, December 18th. We normally celebra uh, celebrate that here in the U.S. in November. I know Canada celebrates it in October, I believe. So, interesting. Um, Alright, let's help Zanzibar while we're here. Oh, ScumVM fixed the little um, Z clipping here. That's nice. Uh, where the penguin Z clipped with the interface. I don't think they fixed the Kenya cutscene yet. Um, a lot of those Kenya graphics were left over from the prototypes. Um, so they were using weird. Um, oh, they didn't fix the Z clipping there. Five more animals to be saved. You know, this mini game doesn't get the credit it deserves. I don't normally play it, but it is a fun mini game. And like, okay, that's it's a fun mini game. And um, yeah, we'll go to Jungle Land. It's a fun mini game. It doesn't get the credit it deserves, which is sad. But you know, what are you gonna do? Ooh, hey, you guys want to hear another song from George Sanger? All right, all right, here we go. Let's let's play another song from George Sanger. Let's rhyme. How about hopscotch? Hopscotch. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, I got one. 
Oh. You're so top notch, playing hopscotch. I did click on George's monkey though. Stop watch. Let's see if we can get George to do a rhyme. What about honey? I know. Oh, there we go. I had a sandwich made with honey. Tasted kind of funny. So I gave it to my bunny. Crazy honey. Let's snap it. Let's snap it for George. Snap, snap. Snap, snap. Snap, snap. Snap, snap. That's great. It's great. I loved it. I loved it. Snap, snap. There's a toolbox in there. Snap, snap. Let's grab the toolbox. All right, Papa. You're just stealing stuff. I appreciate it. I wonder how a car would swim. It's interesting, huh? We don't ever get a putt-putt swimming type of thing after putt-putt saves the zoo, right? Yeah, you know, I, yeah, yeah, because he goes, he travels through time next, he enters the race, and then he joins the circus, so I don't think there's ever another opportunity for him to, um, now we can learn all about hippos. Hippos do a swimming thing, you know? Interesting. Interesting. Oops. Good thing window capture exists. <laughs> it's good to have my boy home. Okay. I'm sure glad to be home with my pop. <laughs> Alright, let's go down the rapids here. I want to take you to one of my favorite rooms Whoa. in um, Putt Putt Saves the Zoo. I think it's this way. Nope. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Nope, 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 nope. Fast mode, don't do that to me. There it is. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go to my... Th I think... So this is either my number one favorite room in Pup Pup Zaves the Zoo, or I don't know what, but it's, I love this room. Just, it's so freaking creepy. <laughs> yeah, there is a turtle click point. I never really understood it, but like, If you have to understand click points. Oh no. <laughs> I never understand the click points all the time, but uh uh let me see what else. Imagine Papa trying to swim. Yeah, that that is that would be really strange, right? Um let's see if they fix the Z clipping here. Are they fixed that one? I think that one's been fixed for a while now, actually. No, they didn't fix this. I can't win. Then we're just going to have to figure out another way to help you. They fixed this one. That would make me. So yeah, I guess that's a scum VM bug itself. Um sure is dark in there. Because if you play the game in the original thing, it doesn't do that. The original ex uh, executable. Um, 
Maybe with this the Sputnum container. Maybe need to rescue four animals so the zoo can open. Yeah, that area was pretty peaceful. I like, I, I love that room. I know one of my favorite rooms is, um... The one with the billboard with the George cameo on it, um, because that room is infamous for a lot of um, prototype images floating around on the internet. Um, so that's that's one of my favorite rooms because we actually seen a lot of um, different versions of that room. So. The, uh, those images floating around on the internet, which is pretty cool. Um, I, hope I, I know that's one of my favorite rooms. I don't know where to rank it, but it is one of my favorite rooms. Let's see if we can get another rhyme here. How about Blossom? Blossom. Blossom. Yeah, yeah I know. Okay. What? This Blossom, blossom. looks so awesome. Blossom. I should blossom. give it to a Blossom. Oh, oh yeah. Blossom. Great. Cool. I love it. Did they fix the Z-clipping here? Nope. It's interesting how bugs like that happen when you build an interpreter from uh, basically scratch. Um, it's interesting how little bugs like that happen because like in newer versions of Humongous Entertainment games, uh, they don't... So this is an object, this flower. So the depth of like objects and costumes i'm pretty sure costumes are always over objects um and in newer humongous entertainment games they started using a sprite so that's something interesting and it's just it's just interesting to see like see like little glitches like that you know um all right let's head into grassland and um help uh, baby Jumbo. I don't know why we didn't do this before, because we had this. Thanks, little mousey. Uh, I mean, I mean giant scary mousey. Oh no. Excuse me. Doesn't playing Putt Putt Saves the Zoo remind you of a simpler time? It reminds me of a simpler time. <laughs> oh, thanks, Putt Putt. You're my hero. Oh gosh, babe. Too Nothing uh, too much different in uh, Grasslands here. I didn't have some good stuff to choose for Grasslands, so. Uh, let's save um, Sammy Seal while we're here. I missed you, Mama. And I, I didn't. <laughs> I'm kidding. Oh, wait, hold on. Let's, let's take a photo of Sad Sammy. <laughs> Uh, I'm glad that they made Sammy the character that they made her. So great. It's this. Bum, 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 bum. Get, I... This was always a good song too. It... Save us now. All right, let's head over this, this way. This is an icicle. I I need to rest. Ooh. I keep dreaming about Did we Did we do everything here? Um I'm so glad to be home. Yeah, I think we did everything here. Okay, yeah. I mean, Zanzibar is Burr, I'm freezing. Did we miss any of the uh changed items? I mean, that one because I didn't change out the object for it, but no. I think that was everything. Yeah. All right. Let's go uh, save little Skeeter the snake. Burr, I'm free. Here you go. I rescued all, all of the missing, missing animals. animals. I'd better go tell Outback, Outback Al. Al. Hey, hey Outback, Outback Al. Al. I, I rescued, rescued all, all the lost baby animals. animals. Do rhythmic. Pop pop you save the zoo. I can't thank you enough. Follow me! Welcome, mate, yeah, to the I, grand I, opening of the I, 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 Ooh! 
Today. Look at that! Wait, hold up! Hold up! What's that? Oh, I know why that's like that. I didn't get a chance to test the ending. <laughs> oh, boy, okay. Well, there we go. We know the interface is uh, still underneath. All the time. They didn't shut it off. They just put the car objects over top of it. Unless that was just left over in uh, memory, which is possible. I don't know. It might have been just left over in memory. And we never could have opened the place without him. Thanks to Putt Putt's courage and bravery, we're going to give him this Junior Zookeeper Award. Here you go. Here you go. Good job. Well done. I was glad to help. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. Now, Putt Putt, how about doing the honors and cutting the Man, Putt Putt yeah. says the zoo looks so great. You know what? I think that was just in RAM. Or in, I think that was just in memory. Because it, it, it used the whiz file uh, for that cutscene last. So it was just in memory. Enjoy, Enjoy the, the zoo, zoo Putt Putt. It's going, it's going to be a grand day. Hot diggity. It sure is, Outback Al. Sometimes I can do impressions. Thanks, I appreciate it. Sometimes I can. I used to be able to do a Luther. I can't do Luther anymore, which sucks, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. Oh, wait, where's my favorite click point at in this? I mean, this one's pretty funny. The, uh, the monkey is drinking the soda. This one's great. Love it. And then there's also... Oh, Fatty Bear, Fatty Bear. Not that one. That yeah. one. That one's pretty funny. And then... Yeah. Whoop. What you looking at, Puppet? Yeah. Yeah. Let's give some shout-outs to these lovely people. Ron Gilbert. Great guy. Tammy Borowick. Uh, she's great. Love her. Um, Richard Moe. I don't know if I got to meet Richard Moe. Uh, the name sounds really familiar. Uh, Edward Pun. I know of him. I was in some conversations with him. He's great. Uh, Derek. Great. If it's great backgrounds, great everything. Awesome. Awesome. And look, the fat man, George. Look, there he is. Um, here's everybody else. Joe, David. Um, great team. Great team. David Sanger, George's brother. Uh, part of the drums. Rhett, I think. I don't know. I'm trying to remember how many of these people I actually met and got to say hi to some other people here. Brad Taylor, great guy. He's awesome. Uh, Ron, I never really got to meet him, but he's awesome too. Uh, Grumpy Gamer. He's always working on a great stuff. Tom. Tom did Putt Putt Enters the Race, I believe. He did Putt Putt Enters the Race music. Yeah. Shelly Day. Thank you for creating Putt Putt, one of the great characters, Humongous Entertainment. Love it. Jason Ellison. Let's see if we can get to his page before he goes away. Nope. Oh, there we go. So close. Suzu. It's the kangaroos, roos, roos, and the tigers too. I found all the baby animals. Welcome to the zoo, zoo, zoo. It's me, Putt Putt. The rhyming monkeys. Here they are. Puppet Saves the Zoo. 1995 Humongous Entertainment All Rice Reserved. Any similarity to any actual cars, modern or classic, is strictly coincidental. If you lived in Car Town, you'd be home by now. Mwah. Beautiful. Puppet Saves the Zoo. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas and happy holidays. Love it.
Oh, hello there. Alrighty. Um, let me get uh, Freddy Fish 4 up and running. Hopefully that didn't take too long. Oh, wow, we've been on for an hour already. I feel like that's been a half hour of Putt-Putt Saves Zoo. We, we had a little uh, time messing around there. <laughs> but I tried to do one game uh, that I don't play often. And that will be Freddy Fish 4. So I'm going to need some help with this, potentially. I think I know all the plot lines. It's not as random as most Among Us Entertainment games, but um, yeah. It's time to play Freddy Fish 4. Hello? What's going on? Process Wiz image. Uh, I think I think we crashed the um the HE logo. Oh wow, we did. That was doing the speed test for the HE logo. Wow, my machine speed was set to slow machine because of that. That's so crazy. Yeah, we crashed that script. That's funny. I don't know how that script works, but I have a feeling it has something to do with the HE logo because, uh, so there's a room background image of the HE logo, and then there's versions of it, like, broken up into smaller whiz files, and I feel like those whiz files have something to do with the test there. Ma'am. Oh. Are we there yet, Freddy? Almost. Ah, uh, it's great seeing Parallaxes come back. In Humongous Entertainment Games. I think Freddy Fish 4 was the first time that there was a parallax brought back into the game. Will we get to wear 10 gallon hats? I think a 5 gallon hat is more your size. They got rid of parallaxes when Freddy Fish 1 made the switch over to high res graphics. I guess there was just no need for a parallax. Parallax, but it's nice to see they brought it back. Freddy Fish 4 and then Puppet Joins the Circus had it. And then Freddy Fish 5 had it as well. Freddy Fish. Freddy Fish. Freddy Fish. You know, I and I thought it was appropriate to get a Freddy Fish game in here just because the uh, tech demo for Scum JS is Freddy Fish, so... I only thought it was appropriate to get Freddy Fish in here, too. Hi, Cousin Calico. Oh, hello, Freddy. Howdy, Luther. We're ready to help out. Which way to the hogfish? Well, it seems we got a little problem there. See, my prize-winning hogfish herd has been... Rustled. Rustled? What does that mean? Somebody came and took them without asking. That's not right. No, it's not. And a hogfish requires proper care. I think they might be in real trouble. I just don't know what to do. Did you call the police? I think the sheriff's gone out of town. <laughs> I need to stay here at the ranch. And yeah, he's the uh, gone out of town for sure. Can't wait to see what path we got with him. We'll help you, Cousin Calico. Luther and I will find the hogfish and catch those. I had a box set for Freddy Fish 4, which must mean Freddy Fish 4 was one of the first Among Us Entertainment games I played. Um, but I don't know where the disc is for it. I still have the box and the manual that came with it. I don't have any of the activities that came with it, sadly. But Freddy Fish 4 must have been one of those ones that I've played. Oh, I missed the sea urchin. Um, it, it's really weird. So, I for sure know that a few of the Humongous Entertainment games that I was playing as a child was Blue's Birthday Adventure, and then either Freddy Fish 2 was the next one, or Freddy Fish 4, and then Putt Putt. Pep's birthday surprise. Yeah, it's such a leap, right? 
But I, I also have a Spy Fox disc that I have no idea where that came from. But I'm, I'm gonna say the next time was Putt Putt Pep's birthday surprise. Um, and and Putt Putt Goes to the Moon because I had a dual pack that I bought at uh, an Office Depot when they were still selling those. And then I found that there was a Pajama Sam Life is Rough and I think it was You Are What You Eat From Your Head to Your Feet mixed uh, dual pack there. So I think those are in the next games that I played. And then I think it was Putt Putt Save the Zoo because I own Putt Putt Save the Zoo discs. And then Putt Putt Travels Through Time. And I think I own an Enters the Race disc. I think. But, um, yeah. This was always cool. That this room was dynamic like this. That was always cool how this room was dynamic like that. Oh, and I love this too. Not too many people know about this. Mm, excuse me. But this is really fun. Oh, I think this one's my favorite. Is this the one with the shark? No. This is... Maybe it is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so stupid. I love it. It's so stupid. I, I love it so much. The uh, the things Humongous does to do or did to just like add an extra flair of stuff is just beautiful. The good. I love it. So great. The bad. Yeah, those are all great games. The heavy. Those are all great Humongous Entertainment games. I love them too. Oh, this is another silly one that I love. It's just tumbleweeds. It's so stupidly hilarious. I, I love... I love silly, stupid comedy like this. It's just, it's a great way to get a chuckle, and it, you know, it's good to have a chuckle. Chuckles are great, and it's hilarious. I love it. I love it. I love it so much. This was always a fun quick point, too. I want to see who our rustler head of operations is because all those uh, cutscenes there. Uh, I watched uh, Humongous Entertainment retrospective on that, how they talked about the uh, randomizations about everything. Okay. Um. Yeah, and again, I I just wanted to apologize to everybody that. It took me um, way too long to get set up, and that's just because um... it won't open. <laughs> oh, wait, doy. Two six eight. Um, I don't know why. Three, four, five, six. I don't know why I didn't type this in. I knew that that's what that was, and I didn't. Um, yeah, so I wanted to just apologize again for coming late. Like I said, this is a brand new computer. My Humongous Entertainment games are on here. 
Um, I was just finishing up rebuilding Putt Putt Saves the Zoo for this. I mean, psh, totally a normal version of Putt Putt Saves the Zoo. Totally normal. Totally normal. Uh, hello. Welcome. Uh, welcome to the fun. Welcome. Um, it was a normal version of Puppet Save Soup. Definitely nothing changed about it. Especially a Patty's gift wagon. Anyways. Um, yeah. I was just getting that ready, and then I had to make sure I had a backup just in case I broke Puppet Puppet Saves the Zoo. I mean, it was a normal build of Puppet Puppet Saves the Zoo. Normal. Um, so I had, um, I think another Freddy Fish game as a backup. But I, I had to download that since I didn't have it. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and this is what happens when you put Freddy Fish and Putt Putt Saves the Zoo's game data in the same folder and play it with ScumVM. <sighs> I knew that was... I had a feeling it was going to happen eventually, but that's funny it did. I love that. So, um, as I was saying, yeah, I don't, I don't have all my Humongous Entertainment games on me, so I, I had to get some backups ready. And um, that was another thing that held me up. I wasn't prepared. I really wasn't. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I just wanted to apologize about that again since I wasn't ready. I, I love that this is the Welcome to the Zoo song. Alright, a purple 10 gallon hat, a bow tie, and the letter L. Let's just do this while we're here. I don't think it changes, but yeah, I love that this room is dynamic. I wonder why there's just like a... I, I guess that's the rocks, but like, I've always wondered why that was like that. Just black for no reason. Alright. Um, uh, George the Fat Man was here earlier. Is on. But, uh, he will be back on later today. Uh, later stream for the um, for the talkie file, which I'm very excited for. How does live chat replay work? I don't know. I I feel like I'll figure that out after. Um, but yes, George was on. He talked with us for a little bit. Seven feet by seven feet. Seven feet by seven feet. Um, <laughs> he was whistling uh, Car Town Hitchhiker. And uh, I was trying to figure out which one. Uh, he told me he was whistling a putt tune. And I'm like, which one is it? Which one is it? I'm like, and like, I was thinking... Cartown Hitchhiker is like, yeah, that's the one. That's, that's, that's... Cartown Hitchhiker is really fun. Um, if you guys haven't yet, go purchase, um, his music on Bandcamp. He has Ghost of the Moon up on there. Save, I, well, he has all of his games on there, actually, that he did. Ghost of the Moon, Saves the Zoo, uh, Freddy Fish 1, Case of the Missing Kelp Seeds, Pajama Sam, You Are What You Eat From Your Head to Your Feet, um has a fantastic lyrical song in it, actually. Um, Pep's birthday surprise. So, go check it out. Go buy it. And when you do, you get a ScumVM version of the music and that you can play 
in ScumVM, any version of ScumVM that's newer than 2.2.0. <coughs> Excuse me. And you can play. Play the uh, games with the high quality music. Yes. Okay, so how do we get this bow tie? Folks call me professional trap musician. Let's turn on the captions both. Do you play harmonica? Where's your we'd like to hear? Well, I got a little song about that. Listen here. Oh, I used to all the live long day. So we need to get him a harmonica, huh? Ah uh, ha 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 ha! Playing We Are the Topiary Creatures again. Silly me. Oh, and this room is dynamic too. This changes back here. Um which is really cool. I love how these rooms are dynamic. It's so cool. Maybe. Oh, the bone was here? Oh. We are the topiary creatures. Did it do anything? Where'd the bone go? Oh. I don't know why I thought the bone would come back. I, I was thinking it was this quick point, to be honest. Maybe we should give the shark a purple sea urchin. I think he just chomped it. <laughs> That's fun that that has a quick point interaction. You you gotta love Humongous for um. The MIDI files are so far known to be extracted from the DOS version. Um. Yeah, no, we, we, we talk about, uh, there's a question uh, that we'll, we'll talk about the MIDI files in the talkie file. Um, I'm sure, I'm sure you'll be interested to see what George has to say. Um, but the MIDI files are so far known to be extracted from the DOS version. Well, so, speaking about you. extracting them, someone figured out how to extract the MIDI files from uh, the classic Humongous Entertainment games. I, I, I think it was lost the time on how that was done. Hey, you. But, um, there was a way. This is a mini game back here, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Go away. Oh, was that Tex White? Are you ready to oh, start? wow. Hmm. Never noticed that. Um, yeah, so that's a little, uh, lore for ya. <sighs> I need a hand crank. Where's the hand crank? Uh, I, I just realized there is still a whole place that I did not explore yet. The wheel is a circle. So maybe I do know how to play this game. I hope I haven't played it before. I'm gonna feel really bad if I have. You can select. This one looks good. I feel like I have. I hope I didn't. Friendly reminder to Gil Barker. You yes, the Roland MT32. Yes. Up yes. Yes, 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 yes. That is correct. Oh, boy. So the sheriff is in there. Uh, I might need help with this. How do we get him to stop puffering? You should see my brother. Do you think you could let us by? Sorry, can't. Why is that? I think I'm stuck. I might need help with that if anyone knows how to not have him do that. So what do we... So, I never got to play any of the backyard games online. Um, 
just because I never owned them. I actually never owned a physical copy of the Backyard Sports until one of the Humongous team members were selling a lot of their games. So now I think I own Backyard Baseball, the original. And a newer version of Backyard Football. I don't know how new. And I feel like there's one more. Also, I have, I always thought you could go this way. Like, it... <sighs> Maybe I'm wrong. And, like, I always thought you could go down here, too. Just, like, how everything was drawn. And, like, I remember when I was younger... Um... I tried clicking on those. Because I wanted to go those ways. But, um... Yeah, no, I, I never really own any backyard sports games until then. Um, <laughs> just because when I was a kid, I only played the demos and, like, they just never made any sense to me. And I wasn't really a sports fan anyways. Um, I don't have my CD drive with me at the moment, but um, I, I do own those two games now. Thank you to... Uh, I forgot who gave them to me now. Well, I, I bought them from her. But I, I bought them from a Humongous team member, um, which was cool. I, I bought a few things from a Humongous team members, actually. Um, I have some animation cells, some old action figures and toys from the 1990s. Um, I wanted to do a cute little thing of Putt-Putt in the snow, actually. Um for the winter but there was no snow and also I kind of forgot about it so I wanted to do a little cute thing with Papa in the snow there um didn't get a chance to do that but yeah I I never actually had the chance to play the backyard sports games online and it's it's a bummer cause when I was really getting into Humongous Entertainment, um, the company was sadly coming to an end. Um, like I said, the next couple games I played was Putt Putt Pep's Birthday Surprise, and Life is Rough When You Lose Your Stuff uh, for Pajama Sam. And if you think about it, those games came out in 2002 and 2003. And I'm pretty sure... I don't remember when I got those games, but... It wasn't... It was maybe a few years after 2002 and 2003. And I think the last game that... um. Hum uh, well, I don't know if Humongous actually made it. Uh, the last game Atari made as Humongous, I'm pretty sure, was the Freddy Fish Nintendo DS game. Oh, they came out in the same year. Two thousand three. Nice. 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 I didn't know that. I thought uh, Pep's Birthday Surprise came out in 2002 and uh, Life is Rough came out in 2003. But that's cool. They came out both in the same year, 2003. Um, yeah. So that's, that's my little backstory on playing those games, sadly. Um, but clearly they meant a lot to me that I'm still playing them now, and, like, I use them as inspiration. And, okay, so this always bugged me, too. Like, there was that much water down there. Well, not down there, like, coming from that. Ugh, that always bugged me. Meh. Also, look at that. Look how much attention to detail they put into these games. Oh, and look at that. That's supposed to be because it's poking up out of the water. Crazy. Oh! 
so... The game's actually not broke. Hold on. Um, interesting that you brought that up. And the reason I say that is because... Uh, there actually is, like, s talking about, like, glitches or bugs. There's actually no glitches, at least from what I can tell, no glitches or bugs with the actual way the Yaga engine handles lip syncing. Uh, the Russian version of Putt Putt Pep's Birthday Surprise uses, and I think... Life is, no, life is rough when you lose your stuff, doesn't. But the Russian version of, I believe the Russian version of Putt Putt Pep's Birthday Surprise uses um, the XML versions of the lip sync data. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because you can modify the lip sync data to have it lip sync to whatever you want it to eh, of course i don't have that here um let me see if i can get an example for you i don't have um i don't have the russian version on me but i do have something else that could be used as an example because it's the same exact file uh talkies putt what? Talk is in exist. Okay. Great. Let me just pop in here. Talk is. Lip syncing didn't exist. Useful. Not really. Well, um, I don't think I have it. Yeah, this is That's just... That's the ball I got from Sebastian, the juggling seal. No, it's not going to do anything. Um, it's actually not... So you said, speaking of, I hope there's a way, a mod that fixes the lip syncing for both games. So what I was trying to go off of that is the way that Yaga actually handles lip syncing is perfectly fine, to my knowledge. It's just the lip sync data doesn't have enough data to properly lip sync. And the Russian version of Pep's Birthday Surprise uses a human readable XML file that the English version of Pep's Birthday Surprise also still reads. So, with that being said, every single piece of dialogue needs to be re-lip synced. So, I don't think anyone's going to fix that. And if they do, I bless your soul for taking all that time as a singular person to go in and re-lip sync everything. I bless your soul, and I will thank you immensely if you do so. Um, but you would use that XML file from the Russian version of Pep's Birthday Surprise. Um think they patched it in Life is Rough when you lose your stuff to use the encrypted oh, version. Boy. So if you did copy the XML over into Life is Rough, I don't think it would work. I think they patched it to really? decrypt it. And if it can't decrypt, not to use it. So, But uh, Pep's I, birthday I, surprise I, is absolutely 100% One hundred percent fixable. It's just someone's gonna need to go back in, and uh, yeah, re-lip sync everything. And I don't think anyone's gonna want to do that. Um, the the engine like the engine is 
handles it perfectly well, I think. It's just the lip sync data does not have enough data. Isn't there another room in here? How do I get... There's another room somewhere, because these aren't letters. And do I need pepper for something? I feel like I need to make something sneeze. Oh, is it you? That sure didn't well, he definitely accepted it. I don't know if that's what I'm supposed to be using with that creature. Yeah, no, I, I don't think that's what I'm supposed to be using. But, um, let me see if you... This is spice container full of... There! One can... Um... Yeah, so, uh, hopefully that answers... Uh, what's that, a question or a statement? statement uh hopefully that answers that st answers that statement um i don't think that's what i'm supposed to be using for that oh it's the gum doy oh papa saves the zoo again silly me oh wait a second maybe it's not meant for that oh yeah it is welcome to the no, I, I know what it's, I know what we need to do, it's the pepper. Alright. I get it. I get it. I get it. I haven't played this game in a while. Oh! Oh! Did you see that? Look! Look at the gum! Oh! I wonder why it's doing that. Is there a palette shift there? Interesting. I didn't even know that was a po I didn't even know it was possible. You know, the whole palette system just amazes me cuz you like I'm pretty sure you need to have the color of the interface in all of its items in every single room. They had to do a lot of stuff. Can you be able to to patch the, the shift plus comma. Um, is that the go back to the last room? I mean, I mean, someone could. I'm not exactly sure why anybody would want to actually because not too many people know about the um, go to last room thing um, so I mean if somebody wants to it's certainly possible That's still so funny. Uh, there was a music ID. Oh, there it is again. With a music ID that's similar. Which, I mean, that, that makes sense. That's going to happen in every Humongous Entertainment game. Excuse me. What happened? The duck was in camp, folks. Here, I think that... It looks a lot like the star I used to have. Except mine was... Really? Okay. I hate you. I think that was the only thing I needed in there. Where did I get the starfish from? Up here? Yeah, up here. I like this. 
that's fun that they change colors. I always thought it was the gold one. So, uh, yes, with this Gumbian modification, you can add any new music to any Humongous Entertainment games, minus the classic games for right now. Uh, I mentioned a little bit earlier. I'm working on getting that fixed. I haven't done it yet. Um, I know what the issue is. The patch just get called, just, the patch gets called, the patch gets called too late. So, it just needs to get called earlier, and as long as ScumVM is still able to use the stream audio buffer, because, so for the classic games, it uses the same audio mixer that the LucasArts game uses, and I don't know if that audio mixer is used for anything else, but any other game engines. Which that always kind of bothered me about ScumVM. It's ScumVM, Script Creation Utility Maniac Mansion. I don't know what the VM stands for. I always said it was virtual, uh, virtual machine, virtualizing machine. But they say it's not a virtual, it's not a virtualizer. But um, it's Scum. Whenever I'm developing code for it, I'm only using the Scum engine, and it's actually broke some features in ScumVM that is another reason why I'm using an older version of ScumVM as my main ScumVM build. Um, that always kind of bothered me, but I uh, digress there. Um, the classic games are using the same audio mixer as the LucasArts Scum games. So, but it calls the mixer in the same humongous entertainment audio decoder so as long as the audio decoder for stream streaming files wave uh mp3s and all that is still accessible while classic game is running it's 100 percent possible uh Anyways, so yes, Backyard Football, absolutely, since it's a modern Humongous Entertainment game, just in my tutorial video, it shows how to add any Humongous Entertainment game, or replace music in any Humongous Entertainment game. Um... Backyard Baseball had mini Oh, I guess GameCube was a mini. I've gone to a lot of Interesting. I didn't think Humongous Entertainment was still using mini files, but GameCube, that makes sense. Um, anyways, yeah. You replace in any modern Humongous Entertainment game. Okay, where is that puffer fish at? You over here? No. Where are you at, Pufferfish? I lost you. There you are. Hi, buddy. Here, try to... I know I rambled on for a little bit, but yes. Any any modern Humongous Entertainment game, absolutely. Cool. That was yellow. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, here we are. Kelp. Mine. That's funny. Hey. Why is that light very dim? That's weird. Alright, so I need an L. Oh, I need the screwdriver. Right, I need an L, right? Yeah, great. Give me the screwdriver. Let's go. 
All right. So, harmonica. We'll give that to you. I think these and I think we just need the belt and the 10 gallon hat now. So, go ahead and get that. Ah, oh, shoot. All right, Humongous, I see you. I see you changing my color. Dynamic room changes. I see you. I see you. Here, can you make? Well, while you're still here. That's why it's I also make custom belt buckles with initials on them. Oh, belt buckle. Here, I need the belt. The belt buckle. <gasps> okay. Stand back! Hey! Hmm. Yeah. Glue. My best work! All that's missing is a belt. Here you go. That's so Thank funny. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Mr. Torso. Please call me Nelson. That's so silly. I love it. All right. I uh, I think we're ready to go. Luther, right. you stay here while I try to get past the guard. Wait, I'm coming with you. Good thinking, Luther. Let's try to get past the guard. Hold it! This is a... Well, howdy, fellow wrestler. Ahem, howdy. I reckon Mr. Big must have sent you to help us out with the hogfish, right? Um... Poor Mori, he's having a terrible time with the hogfish. Well, go on in. He'll be glad to see you. Thank you. We did it! Shh. We did it. We're inside. Which way do you think Welcome the hogfish are? That's funny. Hey, you two aren't rustlers. What are you doing here? Um, we were just leaving. You're not going anywhere. Mr. Big will know what to do with you. Just abducted two children. How rude. Hey, look! What's this? It looks like a tell. What's with all the ice? One of the rustlers, but I have no idea. What does this telegram? So, a telegram and ice. So. It's either the piano guy. Or I think it's uh the shark. I can't remember his name. The one that sold us the gum. Oh, there's a glitch here with Scum VM. I wonder if we'll encounter it. Um. This. Actually, that's a fun little scum VM glitch right there. I don't think that happens in the actual game. But you see when you press escape, like it jumps into frame like that. Yeah. That's not... That's not... That's not... I don't think we encounter. Oh, ooh. Oh, there's a bug we encounter. Ooh.
the interface is still showing, and Luther didn't speak there. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's just a scum VM bug. I don't think that's in the actual game. I think you should give yourselves up. You're under arrest in the name of the law. Law? What law? Yeah, I don't. But Scumbium always law. made that uh, ending part. They're really buggy hey, for some reason. Right. I don't know why. Sheriff Shrimp. Yeah, and just about everybody. Okay. Which one is so it's either you, Gil Barker. It's either you or telephone guy, piano guy. Where are you, piano guy? There you are. What? Ice and a telegraph. Oh, you. Telegram. It's true. It's my telegram. I'm Mr. Big. I still don't understand why you wanted us to put ice in there. Well, I didn't mean that literally. It's just an expression. It means to keep them locked up. Now he tells us. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry I meant no harm. I'm just so tired of traveling around all the time. I thought maybe if I had some hogfish, I might be able to make a go of it as a ranch. Well, that's no excuse. Hmm. You all ought to be uh -huh. ashamed. You just shouldn't take things. Okay, ScumVM. It hurts other people. All right, ScumVM. ScumVM just like skipped a whole bunch of scripts right there. I loved it. And it's just Luther started talking as Freddy. And then Luther wasn't supposed to talk in that at all, actually, I don't think, because after Freddy got done talking there, it went right on to the next part. We're sorry. That's funny. We didn't want to be rustlers. Oh, we ranchers, you say? You know, I do still need to help funny. out at my place. I'm glad this I didn't even, Oh, no, Luther was able to talk in that. Luther, those two costumes right there, but that was funny. The hogfish are home safe. Scummy, you're, you're so silly. So silly, Scummy. That's community service, son. Oh, yeah. I think they're coming. <laughs> it's hard work, but when I'm done with them, they'll be real hogfish ranchers. Can we learn to be hogfish ranchers, too? Of course. Here, I've got something for you. Ten gallon tap. Yours is a five gallon, so it'll fit just right. Hmm. Oh boy! Looking sharp, Luther, as always. Come on, you two. I'll show you how to tie a lasso. I love the fading. I'm glad they introduced that. Home where the buffalo roam and the deer and the antelope play. Oh, Stubal was a racehorse when she was mine. <laughs> we are the topiary creatures. Ah, uh, silly me. I think this is the wrong, uh, wrong game. <laughs> With the kangaroos. Give a little love to all the uh, people who worked on Freddy Fish 4. Amazing, amazing people. Absolutely amazing people. Um, humongous, uh, humongous entertainment. Love them. Love everybody. Absolutely amazing people. Absolutely amazing people. Silly me had uh, Freddy Fish and Papa Saves is in the same folder, and the way Scum VM just uh, loads in the music is it just checks the directory of the game. So, yeah, that's why we're hearing Papa Saves the Zoo right now. Nice life, peacefuls. Welcome to the Zoo Zoo Zoo. Give a little bit of love to the people on the credits here. Uh, 
I'll write it and it will sound much better than when we had a wet, wet, wet. Welcome to the zoo, 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 with the kangaroos, roos, roos, and the tigers too, too, too. Welcome to the zoo, zoo. With a buffalo roam, with a deer in the antelope lane. Okay. <laughs> Welcome to the zoo again. We're very pleased to meet you, Signors and Signoritas, too. The animals we feature, you know, would never eat you. We sing so very sweet to you. Welcome to the zoo. With the kangaroos, roos, roos, the tigers, zoo, zoo. Welcome to the zoo, zoo, zoo. So show them some reliance. Come in and see our clients. Do not be the giant yaks. Welcome back, CEO 100 Abel and George Sanger. Welcome back, and hi, Jack. How's it going? Um, <laughs> yeah. Give a little bit more love to the credits here. Everybody who worked on Humongous Entertainment. Silly me put Freddy Fish and Pup Hut Saves the Zoo in the same folder. So we're listening to Welcome to the Zoo and Freddy Fish 4. <laughs> Silly me. Um, these credits are actually kind of long. Unless they started over. Unless they started over. I was looking at my phone while singing. <laughs> Seattle, Washington, Bad Animals. Didn't they record all the, oh yeah, dialogue recorded at Bad Animals. They recorded all the dialogue at Bad, Am Bad Animals. Did Luther's voice actor change at all? I don't know if it did, but he sounds different. I mean, um, Freddy sounds different too in the rest of the games, um, but Luther, I, I don't know if his voice actor changed or not. Um, yeah, copyright 1999, 1999, wow, that's so crazy. Oh, Stubal was a racehorse when she was mine. Wonderful people, wonderful people. Wonderful people. Okay. So, that was Freddy Fish 4. Lovely. So, next on our agenda, uh, we're going to be switching to... Um, and now... Oh, uh, before I say this, now that George is back... Um, George, I think... Let me see here. There was someone that had a question for you um i think it was my friend from discord who had a question oh you know what devin asked me a question too that i totally missed why does the scum vm uh why does scum vm have less uh, cpu usage than the original exe um i sidetracked there for a second george let me answer this um uh, the reason is because uh, ScumVM was made for modern computers. Um, they uh, The ScumVM team built everything from scratch there, so they made it for modern machines. Uh, that's why it uses less CPU usage. They're using more modern techniques to display the graphics and display the sound, so that's why. Uh, if you play the Nimbus Games version of the Putt-Putt Saves the Zoo Windows release, um, that was built for Windows 10. You will see that that uses a lot less CPU usage than I think even the re-release that Atari did. Atari re-released that game a few times. No, it was Humongous Entertainment. So there was the original release, then there was a re-release of the Humongous Entertainment version, and then Atari re-released it again. Atari did it. They asked 
what was left of the Humongous team to re-release it, I assume. But that was under Atari's go. And then I think the Atari, the Atari version plays really well. But, oh, you know what? Not too many people know about the Nimbus Games version. It might still be on Big Fish. Uh, but Nimbus Games re-released Putt-Putt Saves the Zoo for Windows, and that worked really beautifully, because Brad actually built it for modern machines. Anyways, so I digress. Uh, George, someone had a question for you. They were asking when you were coming back, I think, and I assumed that they had a question for you. Let me see who it was. George was here earlier. Uh... Oh, well, maybe they didn't have a question for you. Well, if they do, if they do, <laughs> uh, Bad Animals was Baseball 97, Football 2000's voice acting, Audio Gods was Baseball 2003, new voice acting, and in Papa Enters the Race, via Recording Studios are Bad Animals and Salami? That is not Salami. Hold on. That is not Salami. That is Salami. Holy cow, okay. Do you have Pup Pup Pep's birthday surprise and fix a bug involving taking a picture? Yes, it did fix a bug. Uh, well, it wasn't a bug. Uh, I Maybe it was a bug. Because I don't think the camera worked in those versions. Pup Pup Pep's Zoo. I think it was a feature that was planned for it and wasn't implemented. Because... When you're playing uh, the re-releases of Putt-Putt Saves the Zoo, taking a picture of Mr. Baldini is actually very buggy. Very buggy. Um, take a picture of him, then try to use the camera on him again. Let the doors... As the doors begin to open up, press escape to skip the cutscene. It gets really weird. So I, I think it was a feature that wasn't fully implemented. But yes, it was brought back. Yes, it was brought back for that. All right. So as we're winding down for the live stream here, uh, next up on our agenda is playing a little bit of Box Critters, checking out Minecraft 1.18. I haven't decided if we're, you know, we're going to do a survival world. I'll set a timer for about 30 minutes. We'll play 30 minutes of Minecraft 1.18, see how far we get in. I want to check out the caves and cliffs. Now that I have an RTX 3090 uh, Ti, I can play Minecraft with great frame rates. Um, and then we're going to do invitations to the Freddy Fish Scum JavaScript tech demo. And then we're going to do the talkie file with George Sanger and Team Fat. Okay, sound great, everybody. Let me get uh, box critters here. Uh, ba -ba -ba -da -ba -ba. So uh, right now on box critters, uh, it's their holiday event, and they're getting uh, they have a bunch of holiday stuff for the holiday season. Uh, why is Firefox not an option? Firefox. There we go. Okay. So, they're getting ready for the holiday season. And if you... Oops. I think you just saw YouTube. <laughs> oh, well. That sucks. You saw YouTube. <laughs> oh, yeah, RTX 3090. Uh, I want to be able to reply to you guys. Here, hold on a second. I'm not going to be able to reply to you if I have this set up like this. Yeah, I think you saw. Which, that's fine. It was just YouTube. Nothing... Nothing weird. 
like it's just YouTube showing everything like the uh, whatever it's called the stream settings yes RTX 3090 haha <laughs> very fancy right okay so welcome to box critters it is the holiday season here on box critters as they get ready for their beta testing which I'm super duper excited about so let's check out some of these rooms here pick up some of these items I love that our snail was getting some uh, community members to be a part of box critters, which is really cool. Um, no? Okay. That's the wrong button. That's really cool of him to um, get community members to draw art and whatnot. I'd love to be a programmer for him. I would learn so much from working there. Um but I'd probably have to move to Canada if I actually want to learn something. Um, because if I if I offered my services the way I am now, it probably wouldn't be useful, and I would have to learn um, uh, I'd have to learn what was I going to say? I wouldn't be able to learn if we were, if uh, I was working with our snail over the internet. <laughs> That's what I was trying to say. Sorry. I think I have all these new items, but let's check out everything together. I kind of wish it was a map. Because the way that these critters move are really slow. Oh, okay, there you go. Very beautiful. That room's always the same. I don't know why. Uh... Is anything Christmassy in here? Hello? Hello? Okay. Oh, that's fine. I, I didn't want to go there anyways. Disney who made it the same. So Disney didn't make Club Penguin. Disney bought Club Penguin. It's actually a similar story to well, it's a it's a contrastable story to Humongous Entertainment, actually. How Infogrames bought Humongous Entertainment and then Atari bought Humongous Entertainment. Um, I don't know how to do this puzzle. I really want to figure out how to do it, but I have no idea how to. Um, our snail developed experimental penguins, and Club Penguin was released in 2005, and I think they were... I think it was privately owned for maybe a few months, and then Disney bought them. Um, our snail was still in charge of a developing and running Club Penguin as a business I for as long as I know and then our snail left Disney and then they uh oh is there a quest here no it's just a it's just a rock and then uh Disney continued on with Club Penguin and then after, or around the time I think Disney shut down Club Penguin, our snail was working on box critters. So uh, hopefully that answer, a answers answers your questions. Not really much happening here. I assume they're just saving it for uh, saving their resources for the beta testing of box critters. And, I, you know, I, I said I love the Parallax Rooms and Humongous Entertainment. I love Parallax Rooms. Uh, Club Penguin did a good job at it. But these Parallax Rooms are, uh, well, these aren't Parallax Rooms. These are just sliding across the screen. Uh, even on my 3090, they're having a little bit of trouble. A uh, <laughs> little glitchy. little glitchy. 
wasn't really a fan of these moving rooms here in Box Critters, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. Let's look at some of the items I got here. Beautiful. 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 I look great, don't you think? It's beautiful. <laughs> I, uh... I don't know if there's anything else happening in Box Critters right now. I'm not going to figure out that puzzle. There's no way I'm going to be able to figure it out. Alright, well... You know what? In that case, I think we're done with Box Critters. <laughs> I don't know what else to do in Box Critters. I'm pretty sure that that was it. All right, so we're gonna take a quick break here uh, before we get into Minecraft 1.18. Uh, we'll do that for about 30 minutes and then we'll do the talkie file with George Sanger. Uh, ooh, sorry. Uh, we'll do the invitations to Freddy Fish from ScumJS Tech Demo. We'll come back and do the talkie file with George Sanger. We'll take another short break and then have one more secret surprise. Not really a surprise, this is just one little last thing we're going to do today. Maybe it's a surprise if you like following along with the coding project lately. But one last secret thing, kind of. Um, so we're going to take a quick break, quick bathroom break. So everybody head to the bathroom. I'm going to take a drink. And we'll see you in a minute. Not in a minute. It's 30 seconds. Okay? See you guys in just 30 seconds. We'll be back.
Hey there, how's it going? Welcome back. Welcome back to the stream. Oh wow, I got a lot of stuff open that's using up my resources here. Oh, oh wow, I forgot. Uh, NVIDIA RTX 3090. Hey everybody. Ah, oh, we went down to uh, two viewers. I guess no one's interested in uh, Minecraft. I get it. I'm a humongous entertainment channel, not Minecraft. Or Box Critters, but both of those uh, games I really like, so. Um, hey there, welcome back. Welcome back to the uh, fun. So usually this is when everyone tunes out anyway, so <laughs> is when we play Minecraft and then they come back to uh, watch come back to uh do the talk you file with everybody uh last year we had lance preeb um this year we have uh george sanger and team fat with us um next year i want to try to get brad taylor humongous entertainment brad taylor yeah i really want to try to get brad taylor on with us next year I have a lot of great questions that I want to ask him um, that are only appropriate to ask like in an interview setting and I'm pretty sure a lot of you have questions for Brad Taylor as well. I mean a lot of you had questions for George Sanger so imagine the questions that you would have for Brad Taylor. So. Yeah, right? Exactly. So, yeah. Hopefully we get Brad Taylor next year. I'd love that. I would love that if we got Brad Taylor. Just another awesome person from Humongous Entertainment. Wouldn't that be awesome? <laughs> okay. We're down to two viewers now, I know. Oh, what? I don't want full screen. I don't want Minecraft in full screen, no.
Let's fix this. Alright, let's try that again. Thank you, NVIDIA, but this monitor actually can't support that screen size that big. But I appreciate you trying. Alright, and I, I know, I know this is a... I know this is an RTX 3090, but I do want to knock down some of the uh, settings here just to make sure it's a lot smoother. Let's just go for 40 frame rates. We don't need to see bobbing. Clouds, sure, we'll do fancy. We'll do particles decreased, entity distance 100%. GUI scale, oof. Let's do two. Facing on, sure. Smooth lighting, let's do minimum. Chunk build, uh, builder. I never, I don't know what that is. This is new 1.18. Graphics. <laughs> Fabulous. Okay, we'll do fancy. That's fine. Smooth lighting has been turned down, so. Nearby chunks are compiled in parallel threads. This may result in brief visual holes when blocks are destroyed. Oh my god. Recompile the chunk immediately. This includes block placing and destroying. Full, fully blocking. Nearby chunks are always compiled immediately. This may impact game performance. Interesting. I haven't tried these new settings yet on uh, my potato. Okay. So... Now that we got that all set up, let's switch over to Minecraft. Look at that. Beautiful. And let's call this Holiday Hangout 21. Game mode survival. Difficulty easy, please. Allow cheats. Because I've never been in this game before. Oh, I don't have my fun data packs on here. Dang it. Um, bu -bu -bu. Keep inventory on, please. That's about it. Great. Sometimes you need cheats, especially if we, if, especially if I want to check out the. Uh, wow, that's really fast. If I want to check out the caves and the cliffs and not actually play um, through survival. Ooh, where did we spawn? Oh wait, you can't hear this. Here, let me just bar that quickly. Copy, go back to there, paste reference. All right. You should be able to hear this now. Oh. Oh, hold on. Let me just Yeah, okay. You can you can hear it now. Great. I'll put that back in full screen. There you go. All right. Oh, tutorials. Um, oh, did I not turn bonus chest on? Dang it. Just wanted to try and make this a little bit quicker. Because I really want to just check out the uh, 1.18 features, which are the caves and the cliffs. And that's why I turned cheats on, because kind of to make this quick. Like I said, my channel is not Minecraft, and it's not Box Critters, but I enjoy the game, so... We played on the holiday hangout. This is this is just you know us hanging out, talking, having a good old time with each other. Um, so I can't I can't talk to you guys with the OBS one. That sucks. That sucks. What if I uh, pop this chat out? Yeah, but then it won't be on top. Wish I had a second monitor. It's a bummer. 
Well, I will periodically check back to see if uh, you guys have any questions for me. Okay, so. I actually want to stay very close. Well, let me see this hole first. Yeah, I want to stay very close to this hole for a quick second. Because we can um, get stone here. And I want to get stone first. This area is actually really pretty. The savanna is a great biome. Okay. I'll periodically go back to the chat to see if you guys... Uh, have any comments or anything. Let, uh, yeah, if you got any questions for me, like, hit me up with some questions, too. Like, let's, let's hang out together. That's what this is. It's a holiday hangout. Uh, yeah, if you got any questions. And just because I'm playing, um, Minecraft doesn't mean I can't answer any Humongous Entertainment questions, box critters questions, or, um, questions about any games that you want me to possibly play in the future. How do I get live chat on the mobile browser? I don't think I can. I have old versions of the YouTube app, so I don't think I can actually, that sucks. Everyone should at YouTube and say, um, keep the old ones usable. Scream 5, Papa can't remember who he is, has got to be the Did that happen in the game? I'm not sure if it has, but uh, either way, hello there. Um, I, I think this is the first time we've met, but uh, I don't know how to say your uh, profile name, but hello, welcome. Welcome, welcome. And yes, CO100 Abel, absolutely uh, nice music. Nice music indeed. Um, let me grab some more cobble here. Because it's always good to have cobble. And let me hop back up here. And grab this dirt. Nah, that's, that's the easiest way to jump up that hole. Oh, there's more over there. How nice. Okay. Um, how much wood do I, or stone on me? Okay. Let me make a thingamabobber here. A axe. Hmm. That's not how you do that. You got to make sticks first. Let's go ahead and get sticks. And make an axe. And let's just grab some more wood here. I mean... What did I just jump on? Grass? Oh, it's auto jump turn on. Let's, uh, let's turn that off. No auto jump, please. That's bad. Okay, um... Just wanted to check the chat there. <laughs> it's uh the peaceful time of the stream. And you know, that that's another reason why I put the talkie file together with Minecraft. Uh, because as we wind down, it's the peaceful time. Well not the peaceful, it's the more laid back time of the stream. Um when it comes to playing Humongous Entertainments, I want to be there with you and have fun. And, uh, well, I mean, we're having fun now. At least I am. I hope you are, too. Um, it's just more of a chilled back version. Because, like, when we're playing Minecraft, it's just chill. Chill. Chill, chill, chill. Chill, Bill. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying, Bill? It's chill. <laughs> but I, I don't know. Uh, that's why I put them together, because it's just us chilling out, having a good time, talking with some friends. Um, 
makes sense. It made sense in my head. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys too. Um, all right. So what we're going to do is I want to check out the caves. Uh, we'll see if we can find some cliffs, but I want to set up base here. I'm going to need more wood before we go deeper in because I want to get some torches. Uh, let's take a look over the horizon and um, see what's happening over here. And look, there's pigs too. That's brilliant. Until you get a sword, you should always hit with your axe. It's a good little Minecraft tip there. Oh, there's a chicken here too. Gimme. You should always hit with your axe. A lot of people actually prefer the axe. I don't. I'm still an old Minecraft player. I like the sword, but don't waste your resources on a sword until you have... <gasps> There's a village. Wow. That is lucky. That's going to make life so much easier. All right, hold on. Let's get back into our little hidey hole here. And let's quickly... You know, no, let's just grab this, and let's see if they got a furnace over there. Let's use their stuff, and let's see. Anyone say anything? Doing well? Doing well? Everyone's doing well? That's great. Um, I do actually want to remember this area here, even though there probably will be a... Um, all right, sure, we'll use a torch. Even though there probably will be a cave underneath the village, I'd like to come back here since that's where we were originally. But look at that, there's a village. Oh, this is a cliff. You know, so far the game feels like normal, like Minecraft. Like, we're at Y level 67. Well, that's not too different. But um, so far it feels like Minecraft. Like, this terrain, like, I had a, like, I had a bad feeling that the terrain wouldn't feel like Minecraft terrain anymore. That's a little weird. Um, I was really worried that it wouldn't feel like Minecraft terrain anymore. But so far, this, I mean, it feels like the same game, just a little bit better. Cause like, this is a little more hilly than what it would be. Oh my sheep. I'm sorry, I'm gonna kill your parents. And probably your brother. Hide your kids, hide your wife. Actually, yeah, hide your kids. The wife, I, that's, I'm not gonna kill them. I'm just gonna hide, or, uh, 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 Hide the kids. I'm going to kill the parents. <laughs> Ooh, look at that. We got a smoker. Great. Oh, what did I just strip? All right, well, you know what? We're going to strip all of this. We'll help them out. <laughs> all right, we'll use that to cook. Let's see what they got here. Cartographer table means absolutely nothing. Just stripped another piece of wood. Empty map, empty map. I, I, I guess, oh, they stack? All right, we'll take the maps with us, and I'm going to take this chest. Anyone say anything fun? Nope. So how's everyone doing? What are your uh, plans for the holiday season? I know I asked it already, but we didn't really talk about it much. Um, I don't need paper, unless someone trades with us with paper. Um, I know we talked about uh, Kwanzaa and Hanukkah, and we even mentioned how... Thanksgiving was what's wrong with that fish? Is that a tropical fish? How um it's actually in October. Ooh, clownfish. I never seen a clownfish spawn naturally. So this is fun. I know we talked about um die. Die. <laughs> we talked a little bit of of um Thanksgiving, and I read something on Google, said it to you guys, how it's, uh, another smoker, how it's, uh, was, the first day was in December, I think, I think that's what I read, I need a bed, I need a bed, I'm gonna steal the bed, that, that's some bad generation right there, and you know, that, that's something to be expected with new generation like this, I mean, nope, nope, I want your bed, I want your bed. That's something to be expected with generation like this. And it makes sense. Okay. 
So let me steal this hay. Make some bread out of it. Which I'm going to need to eat soon here, so... Don't you take my hay. Unless you trade something good for it. You don't trade at all. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. Give me your torches. Give me your bed, too. <laughs> Tall grass. Don't need that. You guys trade anything? Nope. You? Great. Don't need any of that. It's a lot of hay. It's good. I don't know if I want to take all of it. I do. I want the bread. It seems like every time we play Minecraft together, we get some type of village. And I, I think that's cheating. Oh, you need a crafting bench. Jerk. <laughs> you need a crafting bench? So annoying. Let's just make some bread there. Give me my crafting bench back. Yep, everyone basically tuned out. <laughs> it's Minecraft. What are you going to do? Y'all ain't here for Minecraft. And I get it. I get it. We're here for Humongous Entertainment. And we're here for having fun. So up next on our agenda is... I really should have put invitations to the Freddy Fish after the Taki file. Since it's kind of shoved in there. Um, because like I said... For last year, Minecraft was supposed to be the, uh, like, little segue into the talking file. Because last year we had, um, uh, Lance Prebon with us. And it's just, it's just us chilling out, having a good time. And this year we have George Sanger and Team Fat, uh, one member from Team Fat with us this year. So that's going to be very exciting. And I hope you guys stick around for that. I'm super excited for it. I think we're going to have a really fun time with George. And uh, if you have any questions for him in the uh, comments, uh, we'll see if we can answer them in chat, if that's cool with you. <laughs> oh, that's here already. All right. Um, I don't think I checked out that house over there. I know I should be waiting on eating, but I just want to keep us ready to go here. Ah, ooh, 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 armor. Thought that was a chest plate. Armor, let's go. Did I check out this one? No, because there's still hay here. I've been trying to get all this hay. <gasps> wow. Talk about bread. I think we're pretty good on bread for a while. <laughs> Like sheesh. I think shears are good for this. And I don't have shears. I really shouldn't be using my axe either since it's my weapon. And I just... Okay, we were here already. So we're down to two viewers, so... Nobody really wants to mess around with Minecraft. I get it. <laughs> I get it. I get it. But, um... Oh, I didn't set a timer for 30 minutes. Set a timer for 25 minutes. 25 minutes. We'll just do 25 since uh, I think we've been here for a while already. So we'll just do 25 together and then we'll get going. Oops. Ooh. Beautiful emeralds. I think I should kill more animals. Even though um, bread's pretty good, we should get some more meat, just in case. So, let's just kill a few more animals so we can have meat to go. This wasn't a critical, but, you know, that was a critical. Nice. Oh, they got melons here, too? Yeah. Let's get some melons. I love getting food sources. Okay. Really, Minecraft? Really? Ugh. 
Was I here already? Yeah, I think I was. I stole that chest. Wow, did we check out all the houses in this village already? That sucks. I'd be a great Minecraft Let's Play YouTuber. Wouldn't I? No. No, I wouldn't. I would suck at it. I'm... Especially since I'm using Minecraft as like a end of the stream kind of thing, I would suck at being a Minecraft YouTuber. I've tried it a few times. Pressure plate. <laughs> I've tried it a few times. I'm not good at it. Okay, so usually there's a hole. There's a cave. But I'm not seeing one. Wow, what's going on? Are we on an island? That sucks. Okay. Now's a good time to eat. If I had good saturated food, it would be. I don't. But I, from what I learned, you should always eat when you have three things of hunger. That's what I learned. Maybe it's wrong. I don't know. All right, my smoker should be down here. You know, I think I'm gonna take that with me. Tropical fish. Can you eat a tropical fish? Oops. Just don't think you can cook it. We'll see. Anything else I can use? I guess we'll just use that. I was gonna use it to, um, make coal so you know what while we're here let's just let's just rip apart this house so we can get some coal oh oh yeah 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 i thought you had a question for george Um, it was, it was a little bit different from, uh, how you asked it for the actual show, so. Hopefully, well, actually, uh, did he answer it? Um, I don't know, but yeah, I'll tag you. I can tag you. That's no problem. That's no problem. No problem at all. No worries. I get you. So, let's get my inventory a little bit cleaned up. I don't need this wool anymore. I don't need feathers. I keep the chest. Don't need wheat seeds. I don't need the wool anymore because I stole a bed. Guess we can keep the map. This is technically food. Let me move this over here. Food. Food. Chest. I'll keep the eggs in case we find a nice place to settle down. Oh, hold on, let me cook that. Ba -ba -ba -da -ba. Did I make a furnace and leave it there? No, I didn't. I hate you, it's not enough. Why would you do that to me? Please let there be stone down here. Thank you. I didn't want to have to travel far for stone. No, give me my torch back. And I just picked all that stuff back up. Don't need that. Keep the wood. Don't need that. Great. Get out of my inventory. Thank you. All right. I'll use some of that to cook the rest of that. I'll hold on to the dirt in case I need to do some scaffolding. That's food. I don't know what that's used for. Well, here, let's research it. 
Clownfish Minecraft. Let's see what that's used for. It is a food item. So how do you cook it? Um, I don't, I don't know about that one. That's not the Minecraft wiki. I don't think it is food. Oh, where are my ad blockers? Lord. I'm sorry, I use ad blockers. Um, I actually do pay for YouTube Premium, so oh, now I do. So I mean, I don't, I don't feel too terrible about it, <laughs> cause that's usually where I give people the most advertisement views. So yeah, sorry, not sorry, maybe. Okay, so what do I do with the clownfish? Can I eat it? Oh, it's nighttime. Oh, no, no, give me my clownfish back. I want my clownfish and my torch. All right, give me all that stuff back. It's not like I didn't want it. Okay. Bedtime. Time to sweep. Time to sweep. Sweep. It's nice actually playing this game. S something that's not my Mac. It's actually really nice. Time to sweep. As B double O's would say, if any of you know who B double O's is. Great person. B double O. Great YouTuber. <laughs> Minecraft. Stop doing that. Get out of my inventory. Get out of my inventory. Get out of my inventory. I don't need any of this. I don't need any of this. No, no. I don't need any of these items. All right. I think that's all the food I had to cook. I'm actually going to take this guy with me because it uses iron to make. And I'm going to grab a new pickaxe. And, oh, it's not what I wanted to do. I actually wanted to, um, I don't need that, okay. I wanted another one of these in case I needed to, um, whack a few things. So, boop, good, yep. But would you look at that? That sucks. Wasn't there a way that you could um, do that from the inventory or the uh, HUD and not have to do it in the inventory? Oh, hi there, buddy. You don't want to burn in daylight? Burn in daylight. Ooh, wow, look how pretty this is. Um, I know I said let's go back to where we were, but let me see what this is. Because I just, I really want to dig down and see the caves. So, you know what, that's what we're going to do. Let's just dig down. Sandstone. Maybe we can find a diamond. I don't know what, I, oh wow, we're at 57. I don't know what I want my goal to be. It's just, I guess, see how far we can get together. Um, maybe that'll be diamonds, or it's just, it's how far we get together in 14 minutes. <laughs> it's how far we get in 14 minutes. So, for next year's talkie file... Do you guys want to see if I can try to get Brad Taylor on? Like, I would love to get more people from Humongous Entertainment. 
Um, and maybe we can even have George Sanger back uh, in the future. We're planning to do a Freddy Fish live stream together as well uh, with the high quality Freddy Fish music. Um, we recently just served up a fix for some Freddy Fish sound effects that were actually using George's music uh, that were the wrong IDs. So if you re-download those files, you're going to get a ScumVM zip file that has some fixed music IDs for the ARG song and, um, whoa, that is dark. Oh, uh, it has fixed song IDs, sound IDs for the ARG song and the crab songs. So that's pretty wicked. Uh, I'm not going to take all credit for that because someone has told me about that and helped me get the uh, audio files all beautifully set up for that. I can't remember who it was, but you'll know who I'm talking about. And then you you, you, you write a comment, you tell me, and I'm going to pin it. But uh, I was told on the Junior Adventures uh, Network forums that there were a few, and then since I'm in contact with George, we talked about and got um, those sound effects fixed. I need to be, nope, uh, well, you know, I need to eat, sure. Uh, we got those fixed, so go purchase the Freddy Fish soundtrack if you haven't bought it already. I don't know why you're taking so long. Go purchase it. Go buy it. I have no torches left. Dang it. Um. What are you waiting for? What, what, if it's taking you this long to purchase the music, where have you been? Have you been living under a rock for this long? Go purchase it, go listen to it, and go play the games with the high fidelity music because it sounds great. It's beautiful, it's wonderful, and the music that George produced for Papa Goes to the Moon, Papa Saves the Zoo, Freddy Fish, um, Pep's Birthday Surprise, uh, Pajama Sam 3, You Are What You Eat From Your Head to Your Feet. Everything that George has done is beautiful. And I know Pep's Birthday Surprise doesn't get the credit it does because the Yaga engine has kind of defaced the game, sadly. Um, and I didn't know Backyard Hockey used the Yaga engine. And people tell me Backyard Hockey plays pretty smoothly compared to Pep's Birthday Surprise and Life is Rough When You Lose Your Stuff. But his music for Pep's Birthday Surprise is really, really great. Um, I think the very first time I talked with George was actually regarding Pe uh, Pep's Birthday Surprise uh, with the um, invitation song. Um, shh, quiet. Puppets are Fatman's Got a Secret. I always thought it was Puppets Got a Secret, <laughs> but it's the Fatman's Got a Secret. I've got a secret. I am not a singer at all. Please don't listen to me sing, but it's a good song. <laughs> I've got a secret. I just had to let you know. I've got a secret. It's a place you need to go. It's the party of the century that no one knows about. I really can't sing, and my voice is a little shoddy. <laughs> sorry, I made you. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I put you through that, guys. <laughs> um, but no, Pep's birthday surprise and life is rough when you lose your stuff doesn't get the credit it deserves because of the Yaga engine, and it's kind of a shame because both games are. I think the story is really genius, and oh, oh, there's coal right there. I am so mad. Also, yes, I play a version of Minecraft with vanilla twigs. One of those vanilla twigs are copper tools. Shut up. There's a bunch of copper around. 
and like if there's gonna be copper around if like I'm not gonna use copper for anything else I'm not gonna make a spyglass I'm not gonna make the copper blocks because I'm not a builder um, so I want copper tools so that's what I use my vanilla tweaks for uh, my vanilla data packs anyways yeah, Pep's birthday surprise and life is rough when you lose your stuff. Have gr well, Pep's birthday surprise has a better storyline in my opinion than life is rough when you lose your stuff. But both games do have great story attributes in a storyline. It's just the Yaga engine didn't really do a good job at showing what Humongous can do. And what's weird is that, like I said, backyard basketball had a version of the game made in the Yaga engine. And from what I can tell, it runs really well. What happened between Backyard Hockey and Pep's Birthday Surprise? Because the research that I was doing on Pep's Birthday Surprise indicates that while they were working on hockey or directly after uh, Pep's Birthday Surprise was being worked on. And in my research, earlier versions of Pep's Birthday Surprise ran really, really well. But you want to know what one of the catches are? There were very little click point animations stored in the game. So I, I think they were... I, I think... I, I don't know if there was a loading issue with Yaga or what, but it, it's a shame because Pep's Birthday Surprise, in my opinion, it looked really well. And of course, it sounded beautiful. Had George Sanger and Team Fat write the music for it. Um, it looked, sounded great, and the storyline was really well, but... 2004. 2004. Um, uh, Backyard Basketball 2004. Wait, 2004? What? No. Hold on. Backyard Basketball was made in Yaga? No. Was it? No. No, was it? It definitely looks like it's a 3D game, so it's possible. Here, backyard. Oh. No, no, I. Oh, well, no, those are, those look like 3D graphics. Maybe it was. Wow. I didn't know that. Oh, that's the PS2 version. So there was a basketball, backyard basketball in 2004 that was for Windows. And that was scum. Okay. Right? Well, that was two. I mean, was the PS2 version... Yeah, the PS2 version was in 3D. I can't seem to find a Backyard Basketball for 2004 for PC. Oh, wait, hold on. Oh my gosh. No way. What is this? 
Yaga Engine Software Concept by Humongous, by Humongous Inc. It was used in several games beginning in 2002. Oh my gosh. No way. Backyard Basketball 2004. I don't know how accurate this is, but... No way. Because the... The videos that I saw, Backyard Hockey used the same cursors that Pep's Birthday Surprise and um, Life is Rough When You Lose Your Stuff used. Interesting. That's cool. Well, anyways, I assumed Yaga was made for the 3D engine, and I, I guess Atari was forcing them into making another adventure game to, I don't know what their reasoning was behind, but I'm assuming they were just forcing them to make another adventure game, which it, it's not right for a company to ever have to force their subsidiary, subsidiaries to have to make something. That's not right. But anyways, um, if there was more than one 3D game made in Yaga, then that I, I guess that shows why Life is Rough When You Lose Your Stuff and Pep's Birthday Surprise had the many issues that it did. It's because it, I, I would assume it wasn't meant for 2D, for 2D games. So I'm assuming that's what it was. But the games themselves were great. They had great story elements. They had great music. But the technology just wasn't doing it. Like, it was just, it was struggling with the games. And like I said, doing research on the games, thank you to all the proper people who allowed me to do research on Pep's Birthday Surprise. Um, the game ran really, really well before all the click point animations were added in. And, like, the versions that I played, the MNGs may maybe had something to do with the encryption that they were using, too. Um, but... I don't know, maybe that encryption added on an extra level of heap control that just wasn't there. Um, they were using MNGs. I don't think there was any RL, uh, dar RLE files uh, that I saw during my research until later versions of the game. GameCube, but PS2 version was canceled. However, Basketball for GameCube and PS2 was even released later for PC as Baseball 2005. Okay, I mean, that makes sense. Um, I'm assuming they all used the Yaga engine. And I, I have a feeling Yaga was made for um, 3D games. And I have a feeling it was made for backyard 3D adventures and not 2D adventure games. Um, maybe one day I'll ask the humongous team if they could give me more information on you know the yaga adventure games and oh well that's the timer everybody we are uh, done with minecraft we didn't do very much we just dug down a hole and we got we finally got to see deep slate well that sucks <laughs> well i did say we'll do this for 30 minutes and i'm pretty sure we've done this for 30 minutes so let me hop into the um Good theory about Pup Pup Pep's birthday and surprise and Pajama Sam for life is rough when you lose your stuff. As they weren't as bad as I initially thought a decade ago. Yeah, so I mean I I hate saying I I hate saying that Pep's birthday is in prize. And life is rough when you lose your stuff. We're bad. The engine wasn't 
the technology for the game wasn't right. And it's, it's very evident in those early versions of the research that I've done for Pep's Birthday Surprise. Again, thank you to the proper people who allowed me to do my research on that for game development. Um, the early versions of the game, when they were using MNGs, for all of the animations, it was really smooth. It was playing great, you know. It was just fantastic. It was fantastic. The game, well, I mean, it wasn't fantastic. As they started to add in animations, you know, I, I, I saw that the game was starting to slow down. It was. Um, and I don't know, maybe that had something to do with the encryption of the animations. But maybe one day... <sighs> Maybe one day um, I get a lot of people from the development side of Humongous Entertainment on for an episode of The Talkie File where we talk about Scum versus Yaga um, and all that good stuff. But yeah, there's just like, they were using MNGs versus... And then there's there's these EV, EV EVB files that I just I don't know what that is like it's it, it's something else I tell you it, it's something else it is it's it's crazy and I, I wish I wish we could I wish I wish we could get answers to it because like I said those games were great I loved them I did and I'm I, I wanted to give them a lot more credit when I was younger, but, like, it was just so hard to play them because, um... Because of the engine, sadly. But they're beautiful games. They are. They are. They they really are. I They're beautiful games. <laughs> okay, everybody. Let me hop into this BRB scene give you a little bit of music to listen to while I get um uh the beta version of the Freddy Tech demo As you can see here, there is a website already set up for uh, Scum.js, okay? And don't forget to share the DOS preview files as well. Share the DOS preview files? Not sure. Anyways. Scum.js, so, 
What is Scum.js for anyone who's brand new to this? Well, it's a adventure game software that I'm working on in JavaScript, okay? And I'm not a good programmer, so I need to discontinue this. <laughs> um, but I would like to release a version for... Um, for GitHub, for people to mess around with later on, and I won't be updating it, but maybe someone will later on. But you can watch videos here, and you can uh, navigate to the GitHub page here, and you can go to my Twitter here. But it's windowstv.net. It's just a home page. There's only one game that I'm hosting at the moment because everything else is being tested on localhost. But we're going to do this together, okay, everybody? So I'm going to give you the link to beta testing the Freddy Fish tech demo. Are you ready for this? Let's watch closely. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to type this out. We're going to do it together. Are we ready to navigate to this together? We ready? All right. Everybody ready? Everybody got a browser open? Here we go. We're going to go windowstv.net slash beta slash fop, okay? Everyone got that typed into their browsers? There's only one beta game that we can try together. It's the only one I'm hosting at the moment. Are you ready? You got it typed into your browser? Okay, we're going to go to it together. Ready? Here we go. Three, two, one. Oh, I'm playing in Firefox, so it auto starts. Okay, so uh, the space bar is actually not uh, working in this because I didn't set up the keyboard commands correctly um, for the space bar. It's set up for localhost, and anyways, anyway, so. So if you go to windowstv.net slash beta slash fop, you'll get the Freddy Fish tech demo, okay? And you can play this, and you can beta test it. You get to have fun with it. Hit me up on Twitter if you see any bugs, or you can do it on GitHub too. Like I said, on the homepage, just navigate to the GitHub page. And let's just play a little bit of this together, and then you can play it too now that you know the link. And like I said, I'm also working on a Puppet Joins the Circus tech demo and a Pep's Birthday Surprise tech demo, but I don't know how far I'm going to get to the Pep's Birthday Surprise tech demo because I'd like to save that for Unity, which is my next project that I'm going to be working on is Adventure, uh, Adventure Game Studio, uh, not AGS, Adventure Creation. Uh, well, it's, it's something in Unity where you can create adventure games, okay? So, oh, I clicked way too quickly there um it's an adventure game software in unity and i'm gonna try to save pep's birthday surprise for that but i want to start it in um hold up to three <laughs> wait you should be able to hold more than three and also yeah the sea urchins just fall from the sky um they're magic sea urchins uh, you should be able to hold four. Yeah, it's four. You should be able to hold four. Um, yeah. And you can click on Luther with these. You know... Don't hurt Luther. Luther is your friend. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Four. Yes. You can hold four. Uh, and you can interact with stuff, you know? Just like a Hubungus Entertainment game, um, there's even some fun little... Yeah, sorry that I don't have all the captions. I wasn't ready for this. I wasn't, pl I w I wasn't ready. But some of them do have captions. Um... But if you want, you can shut it off here so you don't have to look at all the uh, 
non are unfinished ones. Music, you can shut that off too. Um, I totally did not borrow this from Nimbus Games. I didn't borrow that menu from Nimbus Games. <laughs> Maybe I did. Anyways. So, yeah, it's just, you know, it's just, it's a tech demo. And this, uh, this is, this is the bet, this is the most finished tech demo. And it's the most optimized one. Like I said, uh, the Putt Putt one has a few bugs with videos not playing on iOS. So, that's why I didn't release that one. But, yeah, you can play this tech demo for a couple days. Uh, maybe I'll keep it. I don't know, but it, it's it's just it's it's just still too buggy to actually share. That's why I was thinking about you know making it not permanent. But um, yeah, play this tech demo. Let me know if there's any bugs, okay? Freddy Fish, let me know if there's any bugs. All right. So that's that. And again, it's Windows TV dot net slash beta slash fop that's the freddy fish demo all right let me know if there's any bugs with that and uh i think i think it's time for what you think it's time for do you know what time it is it's a special time right now now that i uh given away the uh secret link to beta testing uh, let me quickly um, ping um, one of our friends that were here with us today. I could have sworn we followed each, each other on Twitter. We we have to. I, I've seen I've seen I've seen your notifications. Oh yeah yeah there you are. Okay, 
it's uh, time for the Toffee Five. So let's see if everything's ready here and let's get started. So to end out the live stream, I wanted to do a mini episode of The Talkie File. It's a podcast I do over on SoundCloud and on Apple Podcasts. Let's play The Talkie File. All right, everybody. Thank you for playing The Talkie File this holiday season. I have some pretty amazing people on with me today. And... I want to give a little bit of a backstory before I introduce them today. So these two, you will probably remember them from a few Humongous Entertainment games and most notably one that I can never stop talking about, Putt-Putt Saves the Zoo. These guys, ever since playing Putt-Putt Saves the Zoo, I wanted to meet them and I had the amazing opportunity to do so during a live stream uh, with one of the main brains behind the scenes playing Putt-Putt Saves a Zoo with the hi-fi music. And ever since then, I'm like, now I need to get them on for the talkie file and make this holiday season a blast because I have a bunch of questions and I know a lot of you guys listening had some questions too. Today, I have the Fat Man and part of Team Fat here with me today Let's let's just have them introduce themselves. Howdy, Ryan. I'm George Sanger. I'm the Fat Man. Uh, I'm really glad to be part of your project to make Christmas exciting again. To save Christmas. Yeah, because the, the <laughs> children were so good this year. They were good. And I'm Joe McDermott. And I'm a children's musician and also a lucky member of Team Fat from back in the day. And I would like, I'd like George and I to describe what Ryan actually looks like. Oh, no. Oh, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> he's, he's probably maybe six foot three, would you say, George? I'd say so. And, and the skin tone, it's like, it's like just like a humongous cartoon. It's sort of an olive uh, green. It's beautiful. <laughs> he's got big, thick glasses. I... <laughs> well, no, he can see through walls is the amazing thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Ryan. I... Have I ruined it yet? <laughs> no, no, not at all. This is great. This is great. Oh, thank goodness. Thank goodness. So what can, what can we do you for, Ryan? So we're going to save the holiday season. We're going to save Christmas. And the only way for us to save the holiday season is for you guys to tell everyone what your holiday season is going to be like this year. Let's talk about that. Like, what do you guys got planned for the holiday season? Has the pandemic possibly mess anything up for you guys? Are you guys still going to have the holiday that you wanted this year? Well, you know, you know, when a, when a window opens, a door closes <laughs> one, of, one of my sons is a park ranger and he's got to work all Christmas Day. So we're going to actually go out to his park and have our Christmas there. Uh -huh. uh, so uh, that's that's our holiday plans. We're gonna, we got a scavenger hunt planned, and, you know, and it's outdoors. So we can uh, we can blame the pandemic for having for being out there scaring the gophers or whatever it is that they got. How about you, Joe? Do you celebrate the holidays? Uh, we do. I have um, <clears throat> there are six of us living in the house now <laughs> two of my sons are home um and it's going to be a music christmas yes Ooh. yesterday I, I bought myself a new preamp uh, spent a bunch of money uh i think i'm going to get an espresso maker which is pretty exciting and uh my sons are all getting music big big music presents so it's great Ooh. so the espresso machine's your music present what kind of songs are you gonna make with that yeah <laughs> Takes a lot of coffee to make children's music, Ryan. <laughs> and now you know our secrets, so you can eat our brains and become us. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, if I, I'm going to have to move to Texas, if I'm going to eat your brains. Yeah, don't don't move here, and unless your politics are in line, don't move here. Oh no, I I, I want to actually visit Austin because um, I heard a lot of good things about the weather, like. It can go up to 100 degrees in Austin, but not feel hot. Is that true? <laughs> Where did you hear that, Ryan? I, I I was reading something on the internet, and then I got <laughs> sucked into a rabbit hole, and everyone's like, yeah, it reaches 100 in here. It's not hot. Like, 
I'm guessing that's not true. <laughs> I'll just I'll just state a fact. One hundred is hot. Oh, oh no! <laughs> but if you come, I'll I'll we'll we'll have some fun. We'll go Woo. we'll go see the sights of Austin. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> okay, well, um, so it sounds like everybody's got um great holiday plans. So I am super super happy. That I'm a small little chunk of your holiday this year, and I'm glad that you guys are a little chunk of my holiday this year, as well as everybody who's going to be listening during the holiday stream. Um, so it, this is this is great. This is great. Um, jumping right into the interview, even though we've been on for what? How how long now? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I, I think the interview started back then, but <laughs> um, I got some rigorous questions for the both of you. Um, and a lot of it is actually going to be uh, around the starting time of when Team Fat was introduced and when MIDI music was a thing. Because like I, I have a lot of questions about MIDI because I, I was still a kid when MIDI was a thing. So like I was only able to listen to it, and I, I, I haven't really got the chance to experience it. So we're going to be talking a lot about uh, MIDI music for games and things like that. So... Jumping right in, let let's start from the beginning. Um, and this is for both of you here. Um, what was the first song you wrote for a game, or the first soundtrack you did for a game? And those uh, were separated by a long, a long spot. Joe, what, what was the first one that you did for a game? Long, long, long pause. Holiday music dubbed into the background, Ryan. <laughs> As we're waiting, uh, I think Wings. Uh, the uh, I think the Game Boy version of Wings, or either that or the regular Nintendo, not the Super. I think that was my first thing that you actually trusted like, me. Like we were doing like Wings and NBA basketball and stuff like that, but you didn't. But didn't. Was... But you did like a Penguin game for Game Boy. I did a Penguin you? game in '83. Wow. Yeah. So uh, that was, and that was before MIDI. Uh, I mean, that was MIDI. Uh, did it exist by then? I think it just kind of almost existed, but but that had nothing to do with me. I had a four-track tape recorder, and uh, I came up with an idea for a, you know, doom -dee -doo -dee -doo -dee -doo, played it on guitar real slow on the tape recorder, and then went to the next track and played the, the melody over the top of that. So it was just two voices. It was for Intellivision. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when I got it where I wanted it, I wrote it out on manuscript paper, like music. <laughs> And then wow. gave, gave that to the developer, and he's a musician. George. I didn't know that. That's you, amazing. Really? That's like yeah, my, yeah. that's my origin story. <laughs> <laughs> and the developer was Dave Warhol. Oh, so he knew how to that. Yeah, so he, he knew how to uh, turn that into code, and uh, and and that was that. And I did it for free. But he oh. called me a little while later and said, uh, our, our lawyers said, we have to have you pay us. How much do you want for it? And I said, $1,000 for a 10-second song. So they paid me $1,000 and the company went out of business. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you broke them. That's all they had. That's right. They didn't, they, didn't, they didn't stay on for the whole eight seconds. No. And they were saving up for Christmas. That's what their $1,000 was for. I know. Oh. Uh, so that's why a lot of people didn't get their Intellivisions that year. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I didn't know that, George. I did. Yeah, that's amazing. So you 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 mentioned that this was before MIDI. So I mean, the the first MIDI. I mean, I, I was working in the studio around then, around eighty eighty two or eighty three, in the yeah. studio with Van Webster and his studio, which was called Digital Sound. It's a very hip studio now. I think it's called like Studio. Uh, or 64 sound or something like that in Pasadena or mm -hmm. South Pass. And, uh, but at the time we were doing like news themes and mm -hmm. we, and one of the artists brought in a, a, a news theme in MIDI mm -hmm. and it was so exotic that mm -hmm. we had, uh, one of the mother's Bob brothers, the one, the one who isn't in Devo was the, sort of world expert at MIDI at the time. Mm -hmm. And we had we had to have him come into the studio and oversee the thing, you know, to just make sure that we had everything hooked up right. So it, yeah. so we were, we were that far back in MIDI, but it wasn't something that you use for games. 
back to Intellivision going out of business. Then I got a couple of gigs with Atari and I drove them out of business similarly. <laughs> um, and, and some time passed. And, and after, just before Christmas. Yeah, yeah. And after, <laughs> after a while, I was doing MIDI stuff for like karaoke and, and song instructors and things like that mm -hmm. and, and songwriters. And, uh, and I was doing like uh, uh, any song for forty nine ninety five. And then if, huh. if I got too busy, I would raise it to fifty nine ninety five. And if I got busy, I didn't, I didn't say, so I, I think I was up to about seventy nine ninety five when Warhol <laughs> called me back. And asked if I'd uh, if I was still charging a thousand bucks for ten seconds of music. I said, "No, my rates have changed, Dave, and I'm here for you." <laughs> uh, and so I, I would, uh, and they, the MT32 existed at that time, and so I got an MT32. I would write MIDI for that. He, I got him to get an MT32. I would modem him my MIDI files. I'm pretty sure I might have even mailed him some discs, but we had like 300, 600 baud modems, which you don't even want to know what that is. And uh, uh, I, I would send him the, the files and then he would turn that into code. So that was, that was where we were at with the MIDI. It was, uh, and, and other adventures happened where MIDI became general MIDI. We played, played a big role in that. George played a huge role in that. He was, he's, he was one of the guys behind the, the standard so that you could write something on one yep. computer and it would sound the same on another computer. Mm-hmm. Our early, our early prototype for that was, hey, Joe, you get an MT32 too and write MIDI <laughs> for that. And then when you send me the file or bring it to me on a disc, mm -hmm. then I'll be able to play it and hear what it is that you had in mind. Mm -hmm. And, and then, an MT32 yeah. is a roll-in, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. And it, was, and it wasn't a game card. Right. It was uh, it was a cheap way to get a lot of sounds to play when you played a MIDI file because usually mm -hmm. a MIDI a keyboard was a was a keyboard they they didn't have lots of sounds in them they could do one sound at a time so you would have to play if you had a MIDI file on a on a computer you'd have to send it to a bunch of different synths to to play a song mm -hmm. I mean it was only meant it was only meant to play one keyboard and then you know. I'm playing my keyboard and look, my Juno is, is making the sounds. <laughs> that was what it was meant for. Right. It, it, so we, we just kind of found it was just such a useful, great tool. And I, I did get to have a little drink with Dave Smith, who invented it, MIDI. Oh. We had a, a real nice conversation where he said, you know, I, I said, I, you know, I couldn't have done what I did without MIDI. You know, and he says, you know, sometimes my kids give me a hard time. Dad, you had it all. You know, you had the world, by, and you gave it away for free. And I said, Dave, sometimes when you go to the party and you're the guy who brings the beer, you're the coolest guy. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and, and didn't Dave do the Odyssey or, or one of the, the yeah, big Dave, synths? Dave Smith, yeah, he did the Prophets. The Prophet, right, yeah. And, and, and he, I think he did some other ones, too, that I, I'm just not a, even I am not geek enough to know exactly what they are. <laughs> um, but yeah. he's a monster. He's an amazing guy. But Man. what was really unique, especially just because George got the MT32, which sounded great. I mean, it it doesn't sound like anything now, but uh, boy, at the time. And I I listened to some of the old recordings, like the the raw tracks we did. George produced one of my children's albums early on, and he did all the orchestration with the MT32, and it sounded. It still sounds great. <laughs> um, and the other thing, too, is that, George, you, you have a degree in composition or so. It, I mean, it was not like giving a monkey uh, this this incredible box that could do, you know, orchestras. It was George. George knew what he was doing with it right away. And he, he knew how to use that thing. And it was good. It was a good move for George to get one, let's say. <laughs> and I and I was don't laugh, George. You know that's yeah, true. Why, why, why are you chuckling at that? <laughs> well, but because I'm thinking about how desperate I was to prove that I was, you know, that to to to, to do something that had value. I, I had I had some uh, difficult years when after that crash, you know, after '83 and all those companies going out of business, and I kind of was learning like, man, if I get a gig, I gotta hang on to it. Oh yeah, you know. So I so I was very focused uh, by the time I was hanging out with Joe. I was very eager to do a good job, very eager. 
Um, and and it just happened that fate, you know, in Austin, there was Origin Systems, and they were like, well, we're going to write a game, and the sound card we're going to use is an MT32. And I'm like, I'm a game guy. I do. <laughs> I, 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 and I know the MT32. I'm your guy. I'm your guy. I'm your guy. And, and at the same time, uh, LucasArts was doing MT32 things, so they, they came up with Loom around then. Mm-hmm. I can't remember which one was first. I, I think that it was, the, uh, it was Wing Commander for, mm-hmm. for Origin Systems. So MT32, it's like right place, right time. Um, and we became the MT32 guys. So, so it was just our sketch pad, but then it became the release format. And that's how you got into the general MIDI ball of wax. Well, too, right? actually, uh, it, it, a little more convoluted than that, but um, I got in with the Roland guys then, and I, and I, was, and I was pushing for MT32 to be a standard like we used it in-house. So I was encouraging, you know, so John Miles was working with Origin Systems to develop his Miles Sound Drivers, which eventually became the drivers for all these PC games, right? Yeah. So John Miles and I were pretty tight. Uh, we ran a, instead of modeming things to people, we set up a BBS at my house and shared it. So it was his computer and he did maintenance on it, but it was our phone line. So John, so John Miles was asking me questions about music and uh, I got him to use the MT32 as the standard for how to uh, play back music on the early games. So we would write our songs for MT32, and then the Miles system would play them back the way that we wrote them. So the Miles sound system, um, I, I actually found out about them when I was doing research for... Um, how humongous did their video files in their games and i found the rad game tools and then i found the mile sound system through that is that the same thing yeah oh it's okay. evolved so okay. yeah the rad i think i think miles and who was that other guy john somebody else uh, yeah they uh they combined forces somehow i can't remember exactly when in the timeline Okay. Um, but the the magic thing that happened was that my Roland guy, Tom White, and when I finally got around to writing The Seventh Guest, I called him and said, well, if you want to write one sound... You know, at a certain point, I was writing different sound files for every different card. There were all these different sound cards, and it was a pain right. in the butt. And, my, and Tom White said, well, why don't you just get a Roland... Why don't you just write for General MIDI? I said, well, how do you do that? What's the standard? And he said, well, just get a sound canvas and write for that. Hmm. So I wrote... Seventh guest for Sound Canvas, and you know, put it out there and said, "Hey, everybody, you know, I'm taking a chance on writing a sound format that'll, uh, you know, that that where you write once and it plays on all the different sound cards." And then it kind of didn't. Oh, so I got in the business of Fat Labs, where we would certify sound cards so that they would sound good. That was an adventure right there, and that got me into the the technical side of things. So everything that you told me so far about MIDI is. And then testing it out on different sound cards to make sure it worked. And then when you guys were writing uh, soundtracks in MIDI, did you guys ever have any like writer's block or anything? Because you had to go in and test all the sound cards to see if the song that you wrote here sounded the same there. Like this computer or this game console didn't play your song. Did that ca- did that ever catch you, Joe? Did you ever get involved in that very much? I I did not, and I can say that for me it was <laughs> George. George took care of the details. I just wrote. <laughs> okay. But I say this a lot about those times. We had so little to work with, and it was so fun to not have that much to deal with. When I when I started, I think I started on Super Nintendo. We mm-hmm. had. You Three. did the technology on Super Nintendo. When it was a Super Nintendo game, Joe was yeah. the Joe was Yeah, the I, had, I had to do that. But it was, um, what was it, two voices and a one-armed drummer? Was it three yeah, voices two and one armed drummer? Okay, so Nintendo was two boops, a beep, and a pfft. Yeah, and that was the one-armed drummer. Right. So if you, played, if you played a disco beat, you had to do it with one arm. So boom, boom, because there was only one voice for it. <laughs> But I was always kind of inspired by the just the simplicity of it, you know, like how how can we make these 
boops and beeps actually sound like music. And I, I, I loved it. I, I miss those days. <laughs> and, and, and we're going to be doing some, some retro. I had to explain to Joe what retro was. I had to explain to Joe what, what chip tunes were last week. Ooh. Joe, the, the, the zombies ate my neighbors guy. Joe, Joe is retro. Yeah, it turns out. <laughs> yeah, it turns we out. have met retro, and it is us. I, I never had writer's block, but I was, I was very. Uh, but you get sucked down the drain of having to to get into the technology, and Joe wasn't that interested in it. Except when you get a tool to write Super Nintendo or something like that, those came with specific tools, and Joe right. liked to start with those tools and then mess them up with his own sampler <laughs> systems. You know. He, he, yeah, you, you had good adventures there, Joe. So Yeah, yeah, that was... You were yeah. not free of technology, but you just did the things that... I mean, I, I, I learned what I had to learn to do yeah. music. <laughs> well, but, but also, you, you, you see, like, uh, when, when the tools weren't all they were cracked up to be, Joe would, uh, he'd get an EPS synth, uh, sampler. Well, we got a sampler. In Sonic EPS. He'd uh, make a sample in it. Mm. Uh, <laughs> you know, and then play MIDI to the sampler to get the sound to be right. Okay, using those tools, he'd make he'd do the composition, and then he'd send those samples into the Super Nintendo system and feed that MIDI into it and then see what he had on the console. So he'd use kind of musical tools to unblock the creativity, and they were still pretty technical. Yeah. This is how yeah, I imagine it, Joe. Technical. Am I getting it wrong? No, you it got. I had a, a card that plugged into a Super Nintendo, like just a stock Super Nintendo, and then I had a TV in my studio and speakers, and so yeah, I would I would do all my work on this little keyboard and then port it into the Super Nintendo to listen to it. I think eventually I I could hear it real time, but I'm not sure. So it wasn't real time when you were first doing it. No. Well, it was real time on his composing. On his yeah, composing on my room. end it was, but right. yeah, it wasn't like I could push a uh, a key and hear it through the Super Nintendo. But I think eventually I could, but I can't remember. Uh, yeah, it seems to me that those tools came along later, like an echo program, and right. it was the same with Miles. You know, playing on FM. Uh, you know, he came up eventually with an echo program for us. Hmm. You know, where where we could play our our MIDI files out to to this running pro. TS to TSR a ter terminate stay resident program. <laughs> that's that's when you run two programs at once on a computer. Um, oh my god! So he had one of those. Did you yeah, do that? he made we made one for us. <laughs> yes, had our had our name on it too in, in rope Ooh, letters. Wow! Yeah, yeah, and so we could listen to FM while we were composing. Yeah, so it, I mean, you're, we're not giving you every detail here, but you're getting kind of the swing of it. Yeah. Uh, that that yeah. The number one thing is make good music. Yeah. And then we were still having to pry open windows and doors so that we could fit through them. <laughs> Literally <laughs> windows. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Joe's Joe's joke was you know we were always building a boat you know in the basement. It was like all right, I built a boat in the basement. How are you gonna get it out of there? You know. So so we, so we were we were always like you know at the same time we're writing the coolest tunes we could mm -hmm. there was always somebody going okay now how are we going to make it so people can actually hear this stuff right and 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 the, hear it the way we wrote it yeah yeah or better yeah so there was no like there was no hardware limitations to what you wanted to do you knew the song that you wanted to do and the final result was that song there's subtlety to that answer i want joe to handle it yeah i, I mean i could i could I would just give the stock answer of happy accidents and being inspired by a certain tone would change things. The right. Super Nintendo had reverb and one echo. So, you know, that was like, oh, I can echo this guitar. Now I can use my Telecaster and make a tiny, tiny, tiny sample mm -hmm. and put the reverb on it. And it's going to sound kind of like a guitar. <sighs> but so my first experience in MIDI, I was in the studio with Larry Sire, who's this brilliant multi-Grammy award-winning guy and a good friend of ours. And he just started a cool podcast too, which is amazing. Oh, good. Yeah, I'll have to mm -hmm. check that out. So anyway, I'm in his studio and it was when I was really young and I had just written a song for my girlfriend. 
And I came in and he said, well, I've got a drum machine. I, and I was like, OK. And he, he, he played the rhythm. You know, I played through it and everything. And I said, can I try it again? He goes, yeah. And it starts again. And I looked at him and I said, how did you rewind that fast? Because I was so used to tape. And he yeah. just cracked up and said, it's MIDI. I never did understand it. Until I started working with George, and then he told me what it was. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, here's the million dollar question: Do you understand it now? Okay, so George George was the boss, but we, you know, we we have the relationship that we have. Except I was a total pain in the ass many times, and I I kind of refused to learn these basic things like how to send an email <laughs> and stuff like that. But um, we were at fat lunch. And George was giving us a little rundown. He's like, now make sure your controller sevens are in place, not in the wrong spot. And I looked at George and I said, what's a controller seven? So a controller seven is volume. It's a pretty basic command. <laughs> and he just looked at me like he was going to kill me. Oh, God. <laughs> oh like, sorry, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Did I kill you? <laughs> you didn't kill me, right. no. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, before uh, before the general MIDI and the st sophisticated digital audio workstations, uh, we had to like kind of look at the list of commands in each MIDI channel, and mm. there had to be a controller seven before the first note, and the first note actually had to be delayed just a tad, so that the <laughs> so that the first note wouldn't. If they were in the same tick, it's possible that the first the note could hit before the controller seven hit. So the first note would be the wrong volume, and then the rest of the notes would be the right volume. I remember some of them. <laughs> yeah, so you had to put that in and the pan. What some, was pan, George? What was pan? Well, it's which speaker the sound comes from. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, I, I don't remember. Uh, it was it 11? Some, it might 11 be. 11 was. I see it every day in my yeah. DAW. 11 was something sexy, but I can't remember what it was. Yeah, it was like reverb or some luxury sustained. expression. Yeah. Yeah. You got to hear my new cool. tune, man. I got a new tune came out on a game. Oh, my God. It's, it's kind of stealth right now. You know, we're not like promoting the heck out of it, but it just the trailer came out on Steam two days ago. Wow. So uh, so uh, let's see. What's it called? It's by Comico. And it's called Screen Time. Screen, Can you send me a Screenplay. Link? Screenplay. I'll, I'll send it to you. Yeah. Screenplay. Okay. All right. Ooh. So, George, what, what is controller number one? You know, Joe, Joe me and numbers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I would number have one to, is... I'd have to open it up on the DAW. So, once I map those, I, I have the, the left two faders perma-mapped to right. expression and volume. But oh, I, nice. But once I've done that... I can forget the numbers again. Ten is <laughs> which I do. Ten is pan. A ten. Oh, that's so and, familiar. This is like yeah. gross. It's like, <laughs> hey Joe, remember this? Ten is pan, and you're like, yeah, those were the. Wow, oh, yeah. that's so cool, boy. <laughs> Let's go drink. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> number one is mod wheel. Mod I remember wheel. that. What's mod wheel? It goes. Woo, woo, woo. Oh it. no, no, it doesn't. That's pitch bend, Joe. Modulo oh, goes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, there is nothing in MIDI that goes. La, 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 la. <laughs> no, it all does. I mean, I've I've seen that happen in GarageBand, and that's that's MIDI. So I'm 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 kind of siding with George oh, on this one. It's it's vibrato. Vibra Often. Vibrato. It's whatever you map vibrato. it to. Vibrato. That's you know, what... let's 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 not forget our layers oh, of indirection. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, you're right. Sorry. <laughs> you know, you know, it's just a parameter. You can map it. You can map it to anything. If you're if yeah. you're an analog guy like me, that is so pretentious. Yep. I mean, I'm an analog guy because I, I danced with Don Buchla one time mm. when I was following Dave Smith around at the NAMM show. <laughs> We ended up. <laughs> George, we don't want to know about your personal life. <laughs> Dan Buchla is a very important analog guy. Okay, go ahead. Continue. I'm, I'm done. <laughs> I'll just put the quarter in the jar and stop. <laughs> so I hope this answers your questions, Ryan. Absolutely, it does. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and is this where Putt Putt comes answer. in and goes, What's going on? Explain it all to me. 
No, he's just going to come and be like, I saved the zoo, and then he leaves. Yeah, right. <laughs> he's like, that's what we do to save the zoo. Bye, folks. Yeah, kids, you want to save the zoo? Just remember this. Pan is 10. Pan is 10. <laughs> that's the secret cheat code to save the zoo. Pan is 10. Pan is 10. Is 10. <laughs> Ryan, ask us another question. Get us off MIDI. Uh, jumping into Humongous, uh, this one's specifically for George. Um, how did you meet Ron Gilbert? I was walking around at a trade show mm -hmm. feeling very cowboyish mm -hmm. and important about myself, but not very secure about where my next gig was coming from. Hmm. And there were, they, Humongous had a table at the trade show part of this thing, you know, the, the expo part. Mm -hmm. I, and I think it was Game Developer Conference. And it was not an impressive table, I'm going to tell you. It was a card table. Oh. And there, and there were some discs and stuff like that. And I, and I basically said, hey, I do music. Mm -hmm. And I, I think I might have dropped a name that I'd done Loom or Wing Commander or something like that. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, that's great. We, we are looking for music. Mm -hmm. And we traded business cards. And I actually have this weird impression that they, on the spot, gave me a, like a, a CD of, did they have CDs or a stack of discs of, of like, or they gave me like Fatty Bear or Putt, or, or Putt Parade or something. Mm -hmm. You know, they gave me some real, uh, real prototype thing, e either, yeah. e either an early print of something that hadn't come out uh or maybe they mailed me something but the, I, it was just like instant business wow and uh and then i was in contact with ron and yeah. uh and we started working on uh moon moon yeah 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 it was yeah. that was you george wasn't it mm. that was me and my gimmick for that one was that i wasn't gonna play all the midi myself I was going to mm. hook up my brother on drums and the MIDI mm. was going to come out of the drums and go into my sequencer. Then mm. I was going to have Floyd Domino, the greatest, mm. play keyboard into it. And then I was going to get, and now I can't think of his name, but there was a bassist who played keyboard too. So I said, you're going to play bass lines on the keyboard. So we had two keyboards and Dave on these drum pad things. And, and we were recording it direct to MIDI. Okay. And and that was the gimmick. So we'd have real musicians on MIDI for the first time in a game. And you can go to my Bandcamp page. At, I'm sure all, all, all your guys have <laughs> yeah. already gone there. But, yeah. <laughs> but the, those guys were unbelievable. And, and please, you know, if, 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 you, if you get a chance to, to edit this thing, look up the name of that bass player because he was very cool and he did great and just kind of dub it in right there. Okay. Just, you know. <laughs> that was Kevin Brown. <laughs> Um, Papa goes to the, so it was an instant, so it was like an instant connection with you and Ron. Like he knew that you were going to be a part of Humongous. He knew that the next, uh, flagship game, Papa goes to the moon, he wanted you to be on. So it's like that instant thing right there. I don't think that, I think we could have been anybody, but we, we, we were lucky that we turned out to be us. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that he, we just, we fit the suit. Yeah. You know, is the old expression, you know, we're yeah. putting on a show and you fit the suit. You got the job. So uh, I think that that was what he wanted. I don't, I don't remember auditioning with anything. Really? Um, we just uh, started working and he had very good, very advanced ideas for what audio could do. Right. Um, and he, after a while, trusted that we were that we had a good rep and that we were doing good work. Uh, and he moved forward with us, uh, but there was no long-term contract. In fact, there was, uh, you know, always kind of, <laughs> I got the impression, I don't want to smear him at all, but I got the impression that uh, he'd pay us for the last game mm -hmm. the day before he had a new game to bring to us. <laughs> i don't know if that's true that's just my sick impression if that's not true i apologize and if it is true i don't care we got the jobs and it was fun and, and i have all the respect yeah. in the world for that man uh oh, yeah. because he was always pushing things forward and we got to ride in that wake so yeah we worked with him uh as long as we could and at a certain point he started uh i think he got jeremy soul and his brother in-house 
Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so that started to, to split up. But, uh, but all in that time up there, we gave them all we could. And uh, it was a good run. Yeah. So when working with Humongous, it was Freddy Fish and Puppet Saves the Zoo. And then was it right after Puppet Saves the Zoo? Because the next game was Puppet Travels Through Time that they decided to go in house. Did. What was Ron's main reason behind it? Because I, I felt like Puppa Travels Through Time wasn't, in my opinion, the strongest soundtrack. And then they kind of came back with Enters the Race. And then when you came back for Pep's Birthday Surprise, I'm like, this feels like putt-putt. And then... Oh, it was... bless your heart, Ryan. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody ever said this to me before. <laughs> but, but, but you know what? Out loud, I can only say, oh, I, I'm, I'm sure that... Uh... What, what should I say, Joe? <laughs> uh, sure that uh, Ed over in music at Humongous did a great job. Yeah, yeah. You know, we're all uh, we're all professionals, and we're all trying. Right. To, you know, and I I I I think that the, I don't know what you're talking about, Ryan. I was like, <laughs> okay, Ryan George, let me let me go on about this now. Now now that I've got it, um, mm-hmm. so George was uh, instrumental. And, mm-hmm. and one of the big rules of Team Fat was it's not computer music. You've got to write from the heart. Right. And I think what, what you just stated was a really great example of George's genius, which is mm-hmm. do good music first. Um, the fact that uh, those first games that we did were so complementary to the 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 visuals and everything else. I mean, mm-hmm. that was that was all not a mistake. You know, mm-hmm. George studied that stuff and he he knew, you know, it was it, it was more like scoring a movie, I think, those putt putt games for George. Yeah. And you know, you can't you can't get just a stock musician and say, hey, write some, you know, write some music for this and have it tie to the game like like George did. And mm-hmm. I mean I you know I I I've never really articulated that before, but hearing you as a as a young fan of that music, you know, yeah, yeah, that's what it was. It was a very intentional trying to lock emotion with video games. You know, I can't tell you, Ryan. Um, you know, we came from Joe was a was kind of a guitar god in in uh, in his mind and in Austin. Um, a songwriting it, god, not a guitar god. Oh, I, I, I thought in uh, in this the, is the town of Eric Johnson and yeah, Lonnie Montgomery, and, and he and he was that, and that's why that's why I wanted to work with him. He was he was the best songwriter I knew, <laughs> and uh, and video games, video, music yeah. for video games was a joke. Yes. Yeah, and that's hard for you to to to, to understand, really, but it was just stupid. And I was I really had to leverage out my faith that it would really? become something. And I still feel a little traumatized that I stretched out so yeah. far. I still kind of feel a little bad yeah. that that I didn't know what game music would become. And yeah. I was telling Joe, hey, take all that heart that you put into your uh your your punk music, yeah. your kids' music, your uh artistic music, your indie music. Well, indie wasn't invented yet. And and put it, <laughs> put that into this game music. It'll be big someday. And I didn't know, so I was basically saying, "Come on, get in the covered wagon." There's no Indians. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I didn't know it was irresponsible of me. But that was my vision, and that was what we did. And it actually kind of came to fruition a little, a little late for us. But to see it come to uh, fruition now in this interview with you today, uh, there's a, there's a real uh, satisfaction and a sense of vindication, I guess, or just a sense of being having been lucky, and uh, you know, I'm right. glad it, I'm glad it came out this way, and mm-hmm. we made a good living for a, for a while. Well, when I say good living, we we made a living in music uh, and had a ton of fun, um, but but yeah. it was it was a roll of the dice. And Ryan, and Ryan, like, just to give you perspective, it wasn't just like video game music was mm-hmm. simplistic and it, it people did not like video game music. Yeah. Whenever we'd say, oh, yeah, we do video game music. Oh, so you do the bloops and the bleeps or, 
oh, so you do that irritating stuff that we have to listen to when our kids play this. And, hey, George oh. is writing for the ice cream truck now. <laughs> well, all ice cream trucks sound pretty good now, actually. <laughs> they do. <laughs> but but we but Joe and I would have these kind of knockdown oh. dragouts. You know, they, no, not not knockdown. It was heart to hearts. Yeah. Where where you know we we take long walks out into the country on the railroad tracks. <laughs> yep. And uh, and it's like well I, you know it, it would have to be look you got to just put your best put your heart into this you might as well make something beautiful. Yeah. 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 Even if nobody hears it, nobody likes it. This is where we're. This is where we're putting. And and if it turns out to be a new medium that that people like, yeah. then then this will be this will be a big thing, and this will pay off, and this will touch hearts. And even if they don't know that their hearts are being touched, mm-hmm. you know, we'll just let's just do this. And that's kind of how especially I if it. they don't know their hearts are being touched. Nice. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> nice. Yeah. If they don't know their hearts need to be touched, and then we touch it with music, that's we, about the best thing. We didn't thing you use the do. vocabulary that yeah. we're blessing people, but I think that that's yeah. a really good word, and that was kind of what we were yeah. dancing around. Yeah, yeah, and you know, just to clarify that that seemed really foreign to me because I felt like I was doing real music outside of you know the the beginnings of the Absolutely. video game music, mm-hmm. but. Um, what happened to me in that is George, having a degree in composition, he started <laughs> very carefully mm-hmm. uh, sort of teaching me about real composition and things like that. And um, so it it became, you know, not only for me, it became not only I, I was dragged into giving yeah. that music emotion through composition. George George really turned me on to composition and then it became oh how how good can I make this and how you know how moving can I make this and we and we loved right. one upping each other too yes. so if I did something I I I especially like tiny hero cuz I wrote this mm-hmm. this tune that was really kind of like in some ways it felt like you know fire 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 my heart has got desire you know and, but you know it was very angsty right. um and Joe really took it and said, George, it this just shows me how little you know about modern music. <laughs> and, you know, and that kind of thing would happen. You know, I didn't say that, Drew. Right. <laughs> and, okay. And he'd pull over and recompose it. And then and I'd say, Well, you gotta add, oh, my my comeback was you gotta start it with the word hey. And you know, <laughs> you gotta put the word hey, yeah, da, 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 da. And, and, well, no, I don't want to put it here, he'd put it there, you know. I mean, we just do this back and forthy thing, and it was just fun. You can't touch hearts by using, well, I'd tell Govett, you can't tell, you're not touching hearts by using samples. You know, it's not about, <laughs> it's not about the tones, it's about the notes and where they go. And then he would get to the point where it's like his tones are so magnificent that, that now Hans Zimmer and, and the, uh, you know, Cirque du Soleil are calling him in for the tones, or he'd write something that'd just make me cry, and he'd say, "Well, you know, sometimes you get the right samplers uh, samples on your keyboard, and uh, you know, it kind of inspires you to write something." And I'd be just, "Dog, got it! You, you showed me again." And Team Fat was always just showing me. I, I'd go in all dogmatic, and 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 they'd show me that. You know, I'd lay down the law. This is what art is all about. They they <laughs> blow me out of the water. It was great. <laughs> Well, hey, I mean, like, one-upping and, like, learning is, like, that's the best part about doing something you love and also it being your job. So, like, that's so freaking cool. Yeah, with people that you love and... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it. we joked about the Beatles in the beginning of this thing, mm-hmm. but it was it was very Beatles like we were we were all on each other's sides and we were yeah. all kind of subtly competing with each other to see how <laughs> how how far we could go and the beautiful thing was that no matter what we did the you know if if we happened to win that day it looks good for all of us so it was yeah. it was really a a machine that just kept moving forward and forward yeah and we're working together again Joe and me yeah. You get to reignite those flames again and bring back that fun. That's oh, yeah. right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, we've been both doing games alone, which is, that's not fun. No, it's not. <laughs> You're away from the people that 
like just brings energy to everything. Like yes. So that's cool that you guys are back together again. That it's it's way too cool. It's way too cool. Yeah. It's way too cool. I think we're both excited about it. Yeah. You know, and the one one of the things with video game music, as you probably know, is that you know a lot of the people that work in the video game industry are programmers. Yeah. So. There's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of logical things and, you know, stuff like that. So it's, mm-hmm. it is good to have a team and another person to bounce aesthetics off of and stuff yes. like that. Because I, you know, in working alone with video companies, I've, I've discovered that, you know, sometimes I, I, I would have given up where George, George would stick up for us. You know, we'd write something completely inappropriate that was beautiful yeah. and the, the, you know, the company would say, eh, I don't know about that. And George would be like, OK, look, this is, <laughs> this is a brilliant piece of work. And is that how Welcome to the Zoo came? <laughs> well, yeah, well, yeah, well, Welcome to the Zoo. Yeah, he, he, he sent us lyrics that was like, Welcome to the Zoo, Zoo, Zoo. Yeah. You can have fun, too, 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 with the kangaroos, roos, roos. You know, and that was kind of there was a little more to it. I, I actually found a copy of it somewhere of what he said. I think it's I think it's online. I don't know. Dig around. <laughs> um yeah i think it's in the in the museum you know in the oh, archive okay. but you know i was like i could i can write a song you know what you need yeah. is a you need you know i'm thinking do an alan sherman song do a weird al song you know do something yeah. with a clever clever rhyme and let's do the world's first music video in a game yes let's do that and i, I called ron with that idea or maybe faxed him <laughs> <laughs> no, there was a phone call because I remember. Uh, I, I I think it was the same call. Uh, he said, "Okay, okay, we'll do that." So I'm like, "Okay, oh. that was my permission to go ahead with the rest of the song and write it." Right. Or maybe I'd written it first. I don't remember. But uh, I remember in that, and I said, "Also, uh, can you? Uh, I want to do a cameo. Can I have a cameo in the game?" Yeah. And so he said, "Yeah, yeah, just a second. He says, "He says, hey, Bill or whoever it was, you know, you know that the billboard." The billboard, could you add one more thing to the billboard? Uh, playing in Car Town, the fat man and Team Fat, and just like draw yeah. a, the goofiest looking cowboy in a red suit that you can do. Oh, yeah. I know that. I know that secret Easter egg. I used yeah. that for the, uh, uh, for the, um, yeah, for our, for our screenshot, our screen cap. Yeah. Yeah, I went in and had that animated, had you talking with yeah. that. <laughs> so, so, so I just want to say about Ron Gilbert, he was, he was always uh, cautiously, cautiously game uh, mm-hmm. or the opposite. Uh, he was uh, adventurously smart. Yeah. Um, you know, he, he was not just going to throw everything away on, on, a, on, a, on a goofy idea, but then again, he wasn't completely averse to getting really close to that. You know, mm-hmm. he was a very inspired guy. Mm-hmm. Um, and he had worlds forming in his head all the time. Right. Um, and we were bullets in his gun. And that's that's really the story of, you know, where the other musicians came in and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Is that Ron, Ron Gilbert... You know, he's 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 a machine of creativity and he's going and going and coming up with these great ideas and these worlds. Yeah. And it's not his job, you know, to to say, you know, these are the four people I'm going to work with every single time. You know, it's like, no, 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 no. Watch the Beatles get back, you know, and the the way that they treat even each other. You know, they, they they stick together in the end, but they're like, bring in. Bring in Billy, you know, we don't need this guy. You know, it's like mm-hmm. the, 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 the vision is stronger. And, and we were lucky to get caught up in that swirl. And it took us to great places that we wouldn't have gone otherwise. Man. And, and, and I had some great times with, uh, with him later. I went up and visited him one time. And hey, you know about this. I got, I got a little ride in his purple Miata yeah. and got to hang out at his house. And I think he had a float plane. We didn't get to go up in it, but... Uh, but we hung out. I, I had a business venture that I wanted his advice on, and he yeah. gave me some very, very cool advice. We we uh, we had a re- really good hang, and I got nothing but respect for him. Yeah, man, that, that's some crazy adventures that you guys been on with him, and I'm crazily shocked that he he took in all those 
ideas because like I never would have thought for a game to have a musical number like Putt Putt Saves the Zoo did because like that that's like a whole ton of work you got George you had to make the music for it you had to go back and write all these lyrics and the animators had to go in and animate it yeah, like yeah. we threw our, we threw our part in for nothing but but that cost him money. You know, yeah. I mean, basically, we're saying, "Hey, you're gonna, you're gonna take money out of your pocket and make us coo- look cooler." <laughs> um, but the rising tide's gonna make people like the game more. And actually, that irritated him too. It was kind of funny story. Uh, I talked yeah. to him after that game, and he said, "You know, my niece was playing that game, and and you know, George, all she wanted to do was click on those topiary creatures over and over mm-hmm. again. And and to him, that wasn't." Wow, you know, as cool as the game is, here's one thing that's even, you know, that's one more thing that's like a jewel in the crown. It's more like yeah. she's not getting to the good stuff a little bit. He likes yeah. to be the grumpy gamer, you know. <laughs> and that's who he is, the grumpy gamer. He's the grumpy gamer. <laughs> but that, that, that that's crazy. And it, it became a staple for all the Papa games after that. And it's just like, it, it, you see the big shift and it's, music and technology making the shift from Putt Putt Goes to the Moon to Putt Putt Saves the Zoo. And then there was that in-between time where Freddy Fish 1 was going to be in the same vein as Putt Putt Goes to the Moon. And then Ron had that vision of going to the Windows 95. And he's like, we're going to make Freddy Fish this high-res game. No middies. We're going to have orchestras. We're going to have all this. It's going to be fully animated. Yep. That was huge. That was huge. And I had no idea of what that meant except that he was saying you can use any instruments you want and i'm like yeah <laughs> and, and 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 brian i want to be yeah. real clear too when we're talking about when we're when we're joking around about the other putt putt games that, that came after us i'm not familiar with the music in them so if i'm joking about them being good or bad i actually don't know and george i remember when you came back from hanging out with ron gilbert and what, what I remember is you said he had a really big house and he had this little dog. Mm-hmm. So you'd hear the dog coming from a long distance. You'd hear this little, <laughs> you know, you get closer and closer. <laughs> and it was echoing through the house because there was no furniture in the house. <laughs> There's a little desk with a, that was piled up with computers. And there were a lot of like oh, unopened like cardboard boxes and stuff. Yeah. Hey, well, when you get a little dog pittering, pattering, I mean, that's there you that's go. a good reason to have a big house. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, acoustically, it was interesting. Oh, I bet so. So, George, um, we we touched on Freddy there for a second. This is a good good opportunity for me to ask you this because this is this is a question directly for you. It, Papa goes to the moon had a wave version for windows where you could use real instruments and i i re- faintly remember when tim was uh releasing with you puppet goes to the moon the orchestra versions weren't archived so uh, we'll, we'll talk about that a little after but when you were working on Papa Goes to the Moon, you said you wrote for MIDI. Was that being done first and then the orchestra was done after for the Windows uh, version? W- w- let's see. What what happened? Uh, so on Putt Moon, the interesting thing was I was going to turn in mm-hmm. MIDI. Okay. So, so we didn't have a recorded... Wait, is that right? Well, the Windows version had recorded instruments. What that was you, right? Put Moon was yeah. me. Yeah. But if I could have recorded instruments, I would have. So what I must have done was I must have given them MIDI samples, MIDI and samples. So I must have sampled okay. Dave's D drums. Mhm. And then given them the MIDI and the and the and the files. Otherwise, if I could have done recordings, I absolutely would have. I must have given them samples. Was there a MIDI version too? Yeah, there was um the f- not the floppy version. The 3DO version was MIDI, and there was another version that was MIDI, and then the Windows and Macintosh were using uh Humongous's version of a WAV file. So they those must have been the sampled ones. 
Yeah. So yeah. So I, I would. Uh, I only turned in one version. I didn't. I, I didn't. I didn't record those. Or I might have taken my my rendition. Yeah. Of what we did for the MIDI. Uh huh. And said, okay, now you've got. Now we can do because we had to do MIDI. So yeah. I had to record it that weird way. That's what I captured. So I would have taken my best way of reproducing that mm -hmm. and said, okay, here, now I'm playing back my MIDI version, my MIDI files. I, right. I'm kind of re re recreating this in my mind now. But I would have taken my MIDI files and I would have played back the, sam the best samples I had. So I would have borrowed Dave's D-Drum box. Okay. And I would have used my MT32 or whatever and, mm -hmm. uh, and would have played back uh, on that, captured it on... Dat, okay, probably, and uh, yeah, and, and so that's probably what I would have done there. Okay, so interesting. So, I, so uh, what the missing the missing element is in there is what did the MIDI play back on, and I really don't know. Really, okay, yeah, because I I've always been so shocked about that since because the the MIDI versions well, of some course of it would have played back on, on FM, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so I would have, I would have turned in, uh, I, I would have turned in the, uh, the mini file, the mini file. And I don't remember where the FM came from. Maybe, maybe we shaped up some FM sounds, but I don't think so. I think we might've left it to them. So I'm going to have to wind up pretty soon. Let me, let me, let me take a little break and I'll come back for a little bit. Maybe we can get in some moments with the Govet back in a sec. Okay. Right. Joe, I can shoot some questions at you while George's out. That's all right. Well, I was saying now that he's gone, I can speak freely. <laughs> you get to tell us all the sacred things George has done. <laughs> so there are three songs um, that resonate in my head that you had a big part on uh, from Pup Putt Saves the Zoo, which was Back Roads, Patio Wagon, and, oh my God, Baldini's theme song. So, so, so I, I cannot for the life of me say it. So Pony, so, uh, it's S-P-U-M-O-N-I. Spumoni. Sp Spumoni, yeah. yeah. Uh, the Baldini's <laughs> theme song. Um, those three songs, they are, whenever you go to these zones, you're like, oh, that's Putt Putt Saves a Zoo. And like, there are some banger hits, especially um, Backroads, I like a lot um, because you're just traveling through Car Town and you hear Backroads come on. And like, he's not going to know what tune Backroads is. Oh, he won't. Oh, uh, yes, I am, because I have the internet. <laughs> He's looking it up right now. Right now. Um, I think. Yeah. Did, did I? That's what I got. Oh, is that a whistling it. one? Uh, whistling was. Uh... Hold on. Now, now you got me. Now you got me going all crazy here. Let me see. Hold on. Hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, I, 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 I did did. Oh, hold on. I found it. Yeah, that's Patty Wagon. Oh. Oh wait, no, that's Chuck Wagon. Yeah, it's Chuck Wagon. Yeah. So like it you. I was gonna like ask, what was it like going making these songs? Because, like, like I said earlier, you go to these zones and you're like, this is their theme song. Like, how many versions did you go through to get to where what was released in the game? What was that like? Could you walk <laughs> us through it? Like, if you if you remember any of it. Well, if if my memory serves me right, which it really does, um, we we did a lot of sketches. Yeah. Like I, I, I remember that that was my thing. I would just do a bunch of sketches and see if if anybody liked anything. <laughs> Does that sound accurate, George? Yeah. Uh, but what also sounds sounds, you know, I think what Ryan's probably not getting is that we, we weren't often going off of visuals or details. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times it was like we need four tunes for. Uh, you know, for you know, jungle. Yeah, and we need four jungly tunes. But then we get something like for uh, 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 for the 
various animals there it was specific you know there's going to be a little snake he's going to be sad but we didn't really see what the scene was did we oh no we must have had the audio joe we must have had the audio because we, we knew how long it lasted and we and we'd play it to the thing but uh when when we do sketches uh it was not so much throwing a bunch of the wall and seeing if it would stick mm-hmm. i think it was more like this is how far i've gotten on this one yeah we dig it here's you know they didn't usually get rejected. Yeah. Uh, but they, it, that's true. It'd yeah. be more like, uh, I think my most common comment was try to work in the theme. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know, or see if you can put some drums on it. Right. You know, but usually, usually my comment was like, something that I learned from Joe when, when he, he was teaching, uh, uh, he, he ran a Montessori school and he said when kids will sit on the ground and color with each other they don't go you know they don't critique each other's things it's like this is my drawing I like yeah. your drawing <laughs> and and that is a, that's you know that's my production method you know okay. I said, so that's great <laughs> do that what a team <laughs> Yeah, so so we just kind of, and then you know, I think a lot of the iterations, it was like, mm-hmm. oh yeah, well I'm gonna, you you think that's good? I'm gonna make it better. Oh. And we we do that that to each other. George, you don't you don't know what you don't even know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he showed well, up with that uh, that sweet sugar party song on uh, on Pajama Sam. You are what you eat. Yeah, I mean. He he picked up a saxophone and started and then started playing it, and that was like his first Who? sax song. Who's that? You. Oh me? Yeah, you played sax on on on. Who's gonna be at the party? Oh. Yeah. And wow. that was what inspired me to pick up my trumpet again. Wow, I'm learning so much today. <laughs> <laughs> and then also on that song, I remember saying, "Well, when are you gonna write the words for that?" And you're like, "It doesn't have words." <laughs> and so it's like, oh, you're you're wrong this time. Oh, <laughs> so, so I wrote the words for that one. Man. Right. I kind of remember that. Well, and Ryan, keep in mind too that we were uh we were very in sync with each other. And yeah. and we were we were doing so much writing all the time that we we got really good at just being able to say this I think this is gonna work. Yeah, and you know the the four heads are better than one thing. Really, really right. kind of um, came into play. You get to play off of each other, and the more feedback, the more heads. Like everything is much better when you have four heads. Like even even versus the sketches. Like everyone kept playing back and forth to get to the song to where it was. They came out so good that I I would have never expected that that it was just like play fighting with each other, <laughs> brainstorming back and forth. Like that's how this good song yeah. came out. And like and I don't think a lot of people know that is when you're when you're on a team, it's not just it's not just delegating things. When you're on a team, you have the four heads playing with each other to get the best result possible. Yep. I I remember early on, Joe, I tried to be like a disciplined I was I tried to be the the uh you know, the, I tried to be more of a producer, and it's like we—I was—we were trying to do weekly good but could be better meetings. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And so, like, bring everybody brings something to the table, and then we play good but could be better. Because to me, everything is good, but could be better, no matter how yeah. good it is or how crappy it is. You know, there's going to be something that it'll fit. So at least you can say, well, that could fit in a movie where, you know, the television is broken and uh, the drunk person is trying to write a bad song. Um, but, you know, yeah, there's always some place it could go. Like, what are you trying to do? And uh, But that didn't last very long because that put me in too much of a position of authority. Well, and I, God knows I needed a little authority in the, in the early days, George. George taught me to show up on time. <laughs> hey, showing up on time is very important. <laughs> it's a big deal, yeah. Yes, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And 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 we're not we're not uh, just being. Uh, There's not a passive aggressive uh, comment about you, Dave Govett, if you're listening to this. 
<laughs> and, yeah. and you know I, i'm gonna have to wrap up do you do you want to throw a i mean that, those there's some good uh concluding remarks there uh yeah um yeah no let's let's just conclude with uh where we can find both of you and the new game project what can we expect from that and you know just lead us out with who you are and what what can we expect in the future well, uh, Joe, are we looking for your children's music or? Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> how do we, how do we find that? Um, uh, I believe I'm on Pandora and Spotify and all those places, but it's just Joe McDermott. If you Google Joe McDermott children's music, you'll find it. And then I, I just completed a game last year for a company in Florida called Shiver. And I can't say anything about it, but hopefully it'll be out soon. Fantastic. What about you, George? Okay, on Steam, they just released a trailer. Comico just released a trailer for Screen Life, mm -hmm. and uh, it's got my music on it. And uh, I, I think you guys will like it. It's it's got the old surf and it's got some new orchestral sounds, and it's kind of cool. Uh, but really, just go to my Bandcamp page, the Fat Man and Team Fat, on Bandcamp. Uh, that's that's the funnest. And then Joe and I, it looks like. Uh, it's probably a little premature to say, but uh, it it looks like we're gonna be doing some retro stuff with a company called. It's not it's not signed yet, but the company is called Mega Cat, and they actually make Megacat, cartridges. Yeah. So let's let's get this is where I came in, man. <laughs> <laughs> and this might be where we go out. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Those cigarettes will kill you, Joe. Yeah, <laughs> fast enough. They don't seem to be don't seem to be working very fast, do they? Not fast enough. Well, this was exciting. I thank both of you so much for taking some time out of your busy schedules to come and talk with me. I know everyone appreciated it, and we'll, we're so excited to see what you guys do in the future. And thank, thank you, you so much. Well, thank Ryan, you thank you for recognizing. This, you know, it's that it was a great time for all of us. And it, it's it feels very good to have some young guy go, wow, <laughs> that was cool. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right. Well, emulator. All right. Are we going to do the uh, oh, team, yeah, team high five. five? One, two, Ready? three. Ah, <laughs> missed by a mile. All right. Well done. <laughs> all right, everybody. Right, Thank care. you again. I love it so much that it was the theme song to the Talkie File. I love it. This is so great. Okay, well, so um, that was the Talkie File with George Sanger and Team Fat. It was really, really, really fun. I, I thank George and I thank Joe for coming on and uh, talking with me and having a blast. I can't wait uh, to release this separately as its own video. And hopefully I get it up on Apple Podcasts and SoundCloud. Uh, I'm actually running out of space on SoundCloud, so I didn't get to upload last year's or uh, I didn't get to upload last year's. Hopefully I can do that with this and last year's as soon as I get more space. But uh, I will be uploading this as a video uh, so that people can come watch this separately if you want to. That will be available. I don't know when. Probably in the new year. But it will be available soon. So, yeah. Um, I'll be uploading this. So that you can rewatch it without having to watch the entire stream. Yeah, awesome rock music. I sure had a blast with you as well. Thank you, thank you. It was a blast, and I'm 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 glad. I'm so thankful that um George and Joe uh 
had a uh, uh, had the time to was able. Sorry, I'm typing and talking. Was able to come and chat with us because, like I like I've said at the beginning of this, Putt Putt Save the Zoo. One of my favorite Humongous Learning games, uh, Humongous Entertainment games, probably my most favorite. So having them here today was absolutely amazing. Um, and I'm glad that we got some of your guys' uh, questions answered as well as mine. Um, <laughs> it was so great. Uh, maybe we can try to get them on again for next year too, if you guys have any more questions. But um, we're going to be wrapping up the stream here. Uh, very very quickly uh, well not very quickly I meant to say very soon here um, I just want to go uh, one last time into the browser with all of y'all uh, here let me pull up the browser page uh, YouTube studio mode yep yep that seems about right uh-huh yep 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 looks good looks good so nope it's not <laughs> nice oh wait nope that's YouTube that's not useful um stop it stop okay let's try this again no why are you not hold on Why is it not letting me choose? Huh. It's uh, not letting me choose the other Firefox, uh, Firefox instance. There it is. Great. Great, 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 great. Okay, so uh, one last time. Uh, okay, Merry Christmas to you and your family, and Merry Christmas to George and other game music producers and development team members as well. Lava lamps. <laughs> um, well, my good friend Sam... Um, hold on one second. Hold on one second. Give me one second. I just got to text someone back here quickly. All right. I'll uh, see you later. CO 100 able. Thank you for stopping by and having fun with us today. Um, give me one second. Just have to type someone. We were. Sorry, I, I got a message from someone and I accidentally said their name out loud. Anyways, um. So. What I was trying to say as I said my friend's name that I was texting. Um. Bye, CSEO 100 Able. Um. The stream is going to be. Uh, replayable so obscure and foreign my friend Sarah you can uh, if you want to check it out you can it'll be uh, um, sorry phone again it will be uh, YouTube recorded so but the George Sanger interview will be uploaded soon eventually um, yeah that's what I'm planning for okay so to wrap the stream up starting back on the website remember Go to windowstv.net slash beta slash fap. And you'll be able to play the Freddy Fish uh, demo. Which you weren't able to hear audio there. I wonder if it was working earlier. But you can test out the demo right now. And let me know if there's any bugs. Let me know. Either hit me up on Twitter or use the GitHub page. You can find Twitter right here and you can navigate to GitHub through right there. 
and I promised one more secret uh, before we go. So let me go ahead and turn that off. Hop back into here. Actually, I need it to be on. Oh, it turned on. OK. Um, let this load here quickly. Let me pause it. Actually, I'm going to need to. I need this. Sorry, I actually didn't plan for, well, I did plan for this, but like I said earlier in the stream, I didn't get anything set up for it, so, or I, I wasn't ready. Uh, transform, center to screen, okay. Transform, um, yeah, so this will be available on replay and hopefully I get the George Sanger interview um, yeah the the stream is over <laughs> basically um, but also not there's one last thing I want to do um, and I want to show you the PBS demo uh, and the reason I want to show you this is because this is going to be uh, the next iteration of my programming adventure. I'm going to use uh, PBS as the base bones for my Unity uh, programming adventure. But I want to show you what we have here so far. And uh, yeah, let me just go ahead and restart here. Cut. We're getting ready for Pep's big birthday surprise. I can't share all of our secrets or the party yet. <laughs> head over to Mr. Kibble's feed store to get Pep a present. Hot ziggity. Let's go. So as you can see here, this is the wrong putt putt and he has no eyes. And that's because this demo isn't meant for CreateJS. It's meant for... um what's eventually going to be my transition over to unity but i want to start getting the assets extracted and see how the demo would play out but um just wanted to show this up um as it's this is a, a prototype for unity just to get the assets extracted and whatnot and to like i said see how the demo would play and whatnot but it, it, it's 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 a little you can see that it's a little funky. The graphics from the Joints of Circus uh, demo is here because this demo is not gonna be in uh, JavaScript. It's gonna be in um, it's just the transition for Unity. This is gonna be the Unity project. But uh, yeah, let's just let's just see what we got here. We'll just take a look a little bit. That's my gas gauge. Since this is a demo, we should not, that. There's not much lip sync because I don't even know if I'm going to add lip sync to this demo just because it's it's not meant to be in JavaScript. But um Yeah. <laughs> That's Mr. Kibble. I wonder if he's busy. He's not. Special. Well, your timing couldn't be better. I just got some new flavors in. Spicy tacos. Yeah, but this is just me extracting all the assets uh, from Pep's birthday surprise and getting it ready for Unity. 
So uh, I just wanted to share this just to show you that this is my next adventure. Here you go. On the house. Thanks a bunch, Mr. Tibble. My well, pleasure, pup pup. There you go. Got the puppy that's food. Pup's birthday present. That's that, 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 that's Pep's birthday present. I can't go there yet. I'm not ready to head that way. Great, pup pup. I'm not ready since this is a demo. We shouldn't go that way. All right, fine. We won't go that way. You definitely shouldn't uh, continue to click over there when you're able to try this game. Let me see something here. What is it? Yeah. <laughs> you idiot. I cannot use this in the demo. Okay, putt putt. <laughs> Alright. That's that. That's that. That's it. Alright. So let me just go ahead and pause this. And remember. Uh you can try the Freddy Fish demo right now. Let me know if there's any bugs or anything. Uh, like I said, you can contact me on Twitter or through the GitHub. Just post a bug. And, uh, yeah, let me know what you think. And uh, that is the end of our stream. So I want to thank you for stopping by today and having fun with everybody here um, and our good friend, George Sanger. Uh, it was a blast to have him with us today. And Joe as well. Uh, it, it was honestly a treat having them. And I, I can't thank them enough for being on the Talkie Pod with me. And hopefully I'll get that up on YouTube soon. If I don't, y'all can <laughs> yell at me for not having it. Um, but yeah. No. Um, I guess that's it. I'm glad you guys had a fun time, and the stream will be available to watch after. So if you missed it, uh, you'll be able to watch it later on. Okay? I think that's everything, so... Yeah, that should be everything. All right, everybody, then. Well, if I have an outro, enjoy the outro. I'll see you later. Bye.